we're living in the golden age of streaming. Okay. <laughs> Are we? Actually, Are we? actually, I watched the. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it. Great way to start the show, but of course, a lot of people are having their contracts in for their YouTube streaming, and a lot of YouTube streamers are switching back to Twitch essentially immediately when their contract is. Up. Of course, wow, and so really? why? Because YouTube is there's terrible. A, <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons, and there are a few really good videos about it. But Money function. Essentially, it really depends on what you want to do. Ludwig's video, I think, is probably the best one that I've seen so far. Not surprising. But he goes into detail about why he still likes YouTube, what YouTube is actually good for, and why most of the people that are switching back to Twitch probably should be switching back to Twitch because it is more suited to what they're doing. So Twitch has a bunch of things that are just really, really nice. It has the community, it has the chat, it in, the engagement, everything on there is just catered to this, you know, powwow where you can talk back and forth and communicate with your viewers and have this relationship that builds an audience. What Twitch isn't good at is getting eyes on the content. That's really where YouTube shines. So mm. if you look at streaming numbers, large streams on youtube it's really about equivalent uh across the board if you just look at views but the things that are getting viewed on youtube are live streams of news live streams of political coverage mm. things that are outside of the u.s like twitch is very u.s centric if you start looking outside of twitch youtube is globally centric so you start looking in other countries and twitch is their streaming service essentially and so depending on how you look at it, it does better for some things and Twitch does better for some things. However, for the typical I want to be a streamer type of deal, YouTube will almost never be the right option for you. Interesting. And you always and he was talking about it like you like about multi-streaming and stuff like that. And he's also like, hey, you you really uh want to kind of stick to one because the rich get richer on whatever platform they're on if you're one mm -hmm. of the top streamers on youtube you're going to get more views on youtube if you're the top streamer on twitch you're going to get more streamers or more viewers on twitch like the more you get in one place the mm -hmm. better just okay. because that's how their algorithms are set up and stuff like that Fair. it was a really interesting conversation topic that's been coming up this week because all the contracts are come and due because this time two years ago is really when YouTube started happened. putting a lot of money yeah. into getting streamers to switch. Yeah. And now their two year contract is coming to a close. Speaking of switching, ugh, let's start drinking. <laughs> hey. So, audience, for those of you who weren't here, we are getting situated for a round two. So, <laughs> Anthony, Cue the music. And I have. Okay. All right, clip that. Somebody clip that. <laughs> so, we have a fun game that we're going to go through. So, Anthony and Nat are both going to try this whiskey. I know what the whiskey is. I have a little sheet that tells me what the tasting and the taste notes are and the smells and everything like that. They are going to get a few minutes to go through, and there are two categories they're going to go through, the nosing and the tasting. All they have to do is, in the nosing or the tasting, give me some notes of what they're smelling and what they're tasting, and if it matches what I have on my sheet here, they get a point. Oh. Whoever gets the most points wins. Oh, oh he's already in. Oh, God dang it. I smell, um, oh. I smell... Anthony's off no, to a fast I smell <laughs> strong notes of, um... Wait, 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 wait. I'm never ready. Pennies that are on heads. Ooh. Pennies? Oh my gosh. I'm hoping my glass is clean. Because <laughs> literally, I, it just smells like a a, a coin. <laughs> like you, you picked up. That's not good. <laughs> if your uh -oh. whiskey smells like blood, you might be in trouble. <laughs> blood? My, my glasses copper. smell copper, a little yeah. different, which is weird because we haven't changed anything. Mm. Almost a little fishy. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, well, that smell's going away, so maybe I can smell something in a second. 
This is a very... I don't think there's rye in this. There's not much going on here. No, there's not. Hmm. Um, This is just like... I don't know. I just smell acetone so far. It might be honey. There might be honey. No, hold on. You know, I was having something... It's like there's like a cookie. There's like a baked vibe to it. So, so Nat, you're going and remember, I need y'all to tell me when you're locking Sweets. this stuff in. Like, uh, sorry, cook cookie, um, sh- Ooh. Not sugar cookie, yeah, butter cookie. Is that a thing? Yeah, that that that. We can share that, Anthony. I feel like we helped each other out on that. Yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't yeah. have gotten the cookie if you didn't say anything. Hmm. The slowly Man, turn. This slowly okay, turns um, into from a one v one to a co op experience. Apple? Beat the bourbon like a <laughs> like a sour apple or something. There's like maybe like a fruit there. Okay, oh, I smell the fruit now. Apple? You're right. I said apple. Yeah, I think he's right. Are you taking that one for yours as well? One second. I think so. I don't think there could be anything else other than apple there. Yeah, that's definitely like a like a sour green apple. Sour and green and apples like a, are like one and the same, right? Or no, I guess not is, necessarily. Is there, is there like a date or like some kind of like confectionery sugary piece to it? It's re- it smells great now that I've like sunk into it. Yeah, I think once you get past the um acetone the acetone kind of covering a lot of things up it Opens it gets a little bit more complexity to it after it breathes for a second it's definitely more complex. i just got some umami on the air outside <laughs> 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 looks like there's a japanese shop outside but i know there's not <laughs> okay yeah that's all i think i'm done the there man. this thing is like okay. super Super complex. I'm not really getting a lot off the nose. Okay, drink. Uh, cheers. Episode cheers. 29. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's definitely Irish. Very buttery. Mm-hmm. Very cooky. I would not be surprised if this was like something synonymous with the red breast. Ooh. Mm. I'm just trying caramel. to caramel. Like, There's the... like a very strong caramel at the end there. Oh, look at you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, it literally is almost like you were just eating a caramel and then it's at the very end. It just disappeared. The latent That's mouthfeel on this is great. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's like a, it's like a get a saliva kick, but it's not like yeah, bitter. Very um, I would describe it as velvety. Yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. I like that. Okay, um, do we keep drink? Can we drink a, a second time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now you're just you're letting me know once you're locked in. Once you're at a spot where you're like, okay. Definitely like a buttery sugar cookie. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then it, it honestly, it, it tastes like slightly toasted caramel. Like, I would agree. I'll take the half point. There's like a perfect sure. amount of like. That's super smooth. It's yeah. almost too smooth. It is really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost too smooth though. Like I feel like it might be a little watery. I will go ahead and. Well, I guess we can't help us. What are the legs it here? On it? Does it even it? count if we say it's an Irish whiskey? I mean, it's product of Ireland. Yeah, no, and you I, said I, that I kinda gave that away. You yeah, gave yeah, that yeah. away. Yeah. Off, off the top. I kind of gave that away. Yeah. You're I mean, on the right track. This thing's got no legs. It's got like barely any. Yeah, it's kind of it. It sticks to the glass. Yeah, it's very viscous. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's the opposite. I think when it's sticky, you get a lot of legs. If it's not viscous, it'll run straight off. It won't cause any like uh, rivulets. So mm-hmm. I would tend to what agree on wrong? most of them, 
But if you actually look, you can actually see on the glass. If you if you look through the glass, you'll see how it ripples the image behind it. Oh, I see. And the the tails are super thick and globule. And so they're moving very slowly. And it's actually this layer of almost oil kind of coating around. So the maybe glass. it's less viscous and more oily. Okay. It's probably why it's Maybe. like super smooth. Mm hmm. Yeah, that gives it this velvety, mm -hmm. almost flavor to it for sure. I wonder what wood that's in. What kind of wood? Yeah, like what kind of barrel it's been aged in for that. I think it's a normal white oak. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, like. I don't have much to say about this one. I'm a little mystified by what's actually in this. Okay. I would actually be more curious to know what's actually in it than like, yeah. whether or not we got more points for I it. Think, Cause I feel like me yeah. and Anthony hit the same stuff. Yeah. You're, you're very, I, um, I opened up my book and it have to be on the exact right page. So I'm already out of the competition now. I did that. <laughs> look I, like, that. I was like, just, I picked it up and it's right on the right page. Oh look! Up. Oh man! You know I should have I should have said interesting. That one. So oh, my God. what I was getting I at the... was multi. I like I wanted to say multi, multi, but yeah. I was thinking like it was it was much more caramely oh, and toasted to there me. There was malt in there. Yeah. I think yeah, the that. um the big Smooth. ones that I think you probably could have gotten with enough time mm -hmm. was the maltiness i think you get that a lot in irish sure. whiskey i think y'all are perceiving that as like butterscotch butter cookies but oftentimes yeah. that has like a malty flavor to it the other one that i think is very present are a mixture of like this red wine sherry type of flavor see i've never tasted like i've never tasted a good sherry like i've never like yeah. been <laughs> able to just point it out and be like that's good that's sherry <laughs> right like i know what wine tastes like i know what bourbon tastes like i know what whiskey tastes yeah. like i, I don't know what rum tastes like i don't know what sherry i have no like. idea what sherry I think tastes you like both, so i think you both took the flavor of sherry and memory associated it to apple oh huh. i think that oh apple-y flavor that you're getting is what i would describe as sherry. guys okay humble brag I was looking up my performance in Task Manager, and the Ethernet just looked so bizarre. I'd never seen anything like this. It's like all over the place. I click on it. It's yeah. spiking all over it's the place. It's spiking okay. an upload. My upload just hit 60 megabits per second. Well, you have. You so have I should have one gig up. Know, you should have one gig up, yeah. one gig down now. Fiverr yeah. doesn't have any limitation. On, it might go up uh, to two and a half. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It should. Depending it should. on how many people are on the actual, um, yeah. What, 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 what you, you, you still have that bandwidth network? that you yeah. have to work. Dude, right. I I learned that they put four endpoints at my box, so I was like, does that mean you could like give me three more boxes and terminal ter 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 terminate them here, and then I can get like quadruple the speed, like four Don't, gigs? Well, <laughs> I mean, that's a good way to he, make sure uh, nobody bogs your bandwidth. Well, down. <laughs> apparently there could just be like interference. Or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah. 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 So it wouldn't actually work. Everything would be working on the same uh, band. Yeah. So guys, guys, we're drinking. We are. Guys, what are we doing? We're drinking to the fiber, Focus mountain back. fiber. Fair. Let's get. That's fair. Let's go. Let's get back. Let's get back into the nitty gritty, guys. So, I mean, the, uh, the, so I, I think really what I get here is this fruity, sweet, mm -hmm. sherry red wine flavor, kind of all uh -huh. commingled. It's got this. I, I, I kind of gave a point for each of y'all, but I gave Nat the full point since he listed confectionery sugar first. I think, Anthony, you got it when you when you said it's like a sugar cookie, mm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but that mm -hmm. confectionery sugar, um, I think you both nailed that. It has like this almost fake frosting mm, type of yeah, sugar flavor sure. to it. Yeah. On top of this buttery... Uh, this malty great red now. wine type of deal. Like, have you guys let this thing sit on the edges? It smells like it smells like I would wear a cologne like this. Yeah, it has a very just pleasant. It's smell. a very floral floral smell. My, That's very nice. My wife got me a bourbon cologne from Bath and Body Works with her like order of other things, uh -huh. and so we were excited to see what it smelled like. 
and it doesn't smell bad, but it's definitely just like a generic like cologne that you smell leather. everywhere. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't even taste. It doesn't even smell like leather. It smells like you walk into the men's section at a mall. That's what it smells oh, like. It smells like that. It's, so yeah. I would, I would love to be sponsored one day, and, and look, lava. look, get on my level, Duke okay. Cannon. Can Duke Cannon is so Duke good. Duke Cannon is so yeah. good. Duke Cannon, yeah. please Underrated. contact us. The emails in the Underrated. the doodly do. Like my mom gets me Duke Cannon every year. I have the bourbon soaps. I have the Buffalo Trace Oak Barrel Cologne. Like, dude, he has it they on have his brain. Beard wash. He's thought about this. I don't know, man. <laughs> look, look, I don't know, man. I, Duke Cannon. I don't think so. If, I don't think so. I don't think that's where it's at. Because I just went to Duke Cannon and there's not a quiz. Uh, the the stuff uh, that I got, there was a quiz. They asked me about me, and they Anthony. tailored hey, my cologne fair. to Anthony, me. You know, and it is the best fair. cologne I've ever had in my life. And I can't remember what it's You're called, but wrong. Jesse Cox, thank you, man, for the, for having that sponsorship. Guys, on I, you know. But honestly, I think I got both of y'all beat because when I went in to get my cologne, they didn't even ask me my name. <laughs> and and they were just like, that'll be $250. Oh, geez. No. <laughs> Mine was also cheap. Put it this way. I get, I get three but bars. So good. Oh, it smells so good. A year of Duke Cannon of these big soap bricks that they do. They have rum. They have bourbon. They have oh, campfire. Cut pine, I didn't know they did leather. the liquors. Three bars will last me a whole year if I uh, like. They're so huge. See, I just don't use bar soap inside yeah, the shower. Though. I hate bar soap. Yeah, Dude, it's hard to this... put it on the washcloth, get it to stick, and then start washing your body. That's fair. That's fair. But man, so, it lasts forever. Duke, it smells so great. Looks like the Duke Cannon mm. stuff is reasonably priced, though. It is oh, seven twenty a bar. So I pay, well, I don't pay. My mom usually gets it for me as a Christmas gift. It must be nice. But twenty, she pays $22, $23, and I have soap for the Hawthorne. Year, and it's great. Hawthorne, Hawthorne is also good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, body soaps. Really? What? Body I soaps. Didn't do it. Focus. Hey, hey, God this. dang it. You started that's, fair. that's fair. So, so this is an Irish whiskey that's a little bit on the sweeter side. It's a little bit more approachable, I feel. Matt, how how would you rate this whiskey? This is good. Like, it can and, get it. And you don't usually <laughs> enjoy Irish whiskeys. They're I not don't. on the top of your list. But you I like don't. this one, right? This one's good. Like, I'm not getting hit over the head with its flavor profile. It's subtle. It's definitely not what I usually go for in whiskey. I, I got you. I'm going to grab my computer in a second. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it can get it. Um, super smooth. Uh, great flavor palette uh, without overdoing it. And I don't feel any sort of like aversion to it. Usually whenever I try some an Irish whiskey, there's like a bit of a bite to it, or there's just like an aftertaste that turns me off from the entire experience. And this doesn't have it at the beginning, middle, or end. So, I love it. We gotta do it's more great. single malt Irish whiskeys. Because maybe yeah. that's the thing. To this see, is the maybe this malt. is... Maybe well, that's, Irish maybe whiskeys are usually always single malt. Ah. They're a mixture of... So the thing that makes Irish whiskeys different, that is very unique to Irish whiskeys, are that they do a combination of malted and malted grain. So usually it's always just barley, and it's some percentage malted barley, and then a little bit of unmalted barley. And that mm. unmalted barley is usually what creates that shortbread aftertaste type of deal that is unique to Irish comparatively to like a scotch or single malt scotch where they're just doing barley and they're just doing malted barley. Gotcha. They do not add the unmalted barley. Well, I'll tell you this much. I would give, so rating wise, I'd give this thing a... No, I'm okay with that. Podcast is back on, boys. Nice. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> I would give this a. Hmm. I'm feeling spicy. That's a I good rating a right there. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how you did that. Hmm. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> I'm keeping it spicy. Um. No, without the shoulder shimmy, shoulder shimmy. Uh. I'd give this a five. This is a good. Okay. This is a good whiskey. Mm. Now, now I'm mm. daily drinker. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like this is a great entry point into whiskey. This and is DD it's certified. Yeah. This is really good. I'm. I'm a fan. Okay. Proposition: We buy a stamp that is just DD daily drinker. Ooh, and, and we and... all get a poster and yes. put it up somewhere. Just like. Yes! Oh yeah. my gosh, dude, dude I'm so dude. smart sometimes. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh my god. You're gonna have to find some wall space there, buddy. Yeah. Speaking of wall space, if you haven't noticed, yeah, my shelves are now portrayed in a yeah. in a horizontal fashion. And We're soon gonna will be fill that up with whiskey over a vertical. No, that's gonna be filled here. I mean, here's the here's the the, the jig now. What's that? You're going to have so much whiskey that it's going to fill that other shelf too. Like there's just no, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, so what's going to happen is like once like I have more whiskey and or bourbon that can fit on that shelf, I'm just going to put favorites on the actual shelf and everything else gets pushed into storage. So That's my fair. top 20 will stay up here. Whereas my bottom bitches as they, as they may be called, That's fair. will stay down here. Bottom bunks. Right? Bottom bunkers. My bottom bunks. There we go. My bottom bunkers. Come you on. know what? I like that a lot. Your more BBs. Than what I said. They're your BBs. My little, my little BBs. The ones that I'm going to share with like guests and be like, oh, yeah, this is like a bourbon. You go ahead and try it and be like, oh, yeah. I heard you, I heard you do a podcast. Is this one of your favorites? I'll be like, yeah, of course it is. And I'll be lying, but like, I'm not going to let, guys, I'm not going to let them have my Bardstown. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm never going to, I'm never going to do that. You guys will come I, over and I'll be like, look. Let's get the for the Japanese <laughs> thing that we saw. That's in what San Antonio, oh. that new con that's uh, on Memorial Day oh, or on yeah, Labor yeah, Day yeah. weekend. The new convention. They, uh, did you see that? Oh, I sent, I sent it in the group text. The what is it called? I can't remember the convention name, but they're going to be doing True Dungeon in San Antonio again. What? Yeah, in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. on Labor so Day gonna... weekends. I think. Oh. Labor Day weekend. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to make that trip. I'll have to tell the wife, be like, I got to go. She's got to go. Come. My people need me. I she will come. She will probably not participate, but that's fine. Does she like escape rooms? <laughs> she You know what? Let me go ahead and ask her before I go ahead and speak for her. Let me go ahead and do that. Let me do that. Because I don't want to be the person who's like, oh, yeah, she probably wouldn't like it. And then, like, I show up and she's in full attire. You know, what's funny you know? is I realize I've never met someone that doesn't like escape rooms. But I could, I feel like there's a lot of people that would not would hate them. Because they're, like, oh, it's, it's a horrifying. Very stressful situation. Stressful, sure. claustrophobic. I think, I, I say this about True Dungeon, too. Which, for the audience, True Dungeon is a, a mix of Dungeons and Dragons and an escape room. And I feel like all of those types of events have the same issue. They always say, oh, bring 10 people That's and then people. go through this event. And every single one of them, 10 people, ruins the experience. Every oh, single one I've been to, 10 people ruins the experience. You go to an escape room with 10 people, guess what? You're going to hate that escape room. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you love escape rooms. Ten people sucks in an escape room every single time. You know what's immensely fun in an escape room? Five people. It's the best. It's the yeah, best. Ten people just gets them more money. Yeah. The other one that I will say, even numbered people also tends to be a little weird. Mm -hmm. it can still be fun, but it usually leads to a division or somebody being soloed out. Yeah. which always feels weird, right? If you have four people, what tends to happen is either three people agree and one person gets like this icky feeling where they have an idea but don't feel like they can say it. Five. Or it's two and two and you argue. Five people? Five is the magic number. Yeah, it's For just like everything. Wonderful. Number. Yeah. It's the best. It's so good. It's the best. It's, so good. it's, best. Next, it's the best. But the, the problem is 
or true dungeon I, I i usually go and i have to buy out 10 slots because they're at conventions they have limited space they can't just give away spots for free so usually you have to pay extra money to be able to like do that and that's unfortunate because i've been in situations where i've coached true dungeon or done things like that where i'm in the room volunteering and i see new people get put into a group of like seven people who uh, who they don't know and those new people I, do they just have a what i would consider an unfortunately bad like experience going through these rooms with 10 people and those people just aren't going to want to play again yeah. now i understand the economics of it like they can't just drop it to five people and i understand but i'd still love to see it drop to seven you know just some number less than 10 because I'm not saying seven is ideal, but seven like is ten is ideal. way too far above. You know? Ten is ten is already straining the social co- constraints yeah. of adults. Because I don't know about you, but I have a very small circle of friends now that I will even even like regularly conversate with. It's guys. It's just y'all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. It's just y'all right now. Like it's just us birds. Hey, that's um, where we're that's, at. We're we're we're. In it to, for the long. Haul. I talk to right. you guys, my wife, and my father-in-law. That's about it. <laughs> and my mom, of course. Like, but like, it, it, I, my father-in-law's in like person. <laughs> I feel like that's like not really like a like no like I'm not trying to say this as like oh we shouldn't brag about it. It's more so like I know that this isn't something that's like normal, and we should be like having these larger networks of friends. I just don't feel like it's. I don't feel like where we are society wise allows you to maintain a large network of people because there's so much that goes into maintaining the conversation and the energy of multiple avenues of uh, social interaction. So when you're talking about bringing 10 people to a true dungeon, sorry, to any of any event, unless you've been living with these people since like grades, like middle school up or high school up college up, whatever you are, you have been with these people for a long time and it's been recent. Like you haven't like you recently graduated or something like that. Like you haven't had time to spread out and start making your own life or whatever. 10 people is for people who just, who are fresh out of, normal college or and or school and still have that network of friends because i don't know an adult that has 10 people that they can say yeah that's not my wife and that's not my mom that's not my dad or anybody these are my people yeah well i mean it's like huge diminishing like it's like a quality thing like quantity versus quality the more friends you have the less quality those relationships are going to be because you don't have exactly. the time to invest into each relationship so the fewer the more quality but i don't know some people don't like that it's weird but also like there's like a psychological limit you can only have like 200 people that you are able to be aware of at a given point in time that's like like a theoretical maximum for the average person it's like you could know like their life situation like a little bit about their life I think it really comes down to too like you have this situation where you can essentially group friends into like you're really really close friends into two different groups either you get to see them so much that you're able to keep that close relationship or you have enough like built up trust and respect and like clout that you don't need to talk all the time because a lot of people just get super, super busy. And what a lot of like middle friends do, is, like people who middle are like, friends. oh, yeah, I'm friends with this person. But, yeah. Like they, they, they aren't like super, super close is that like life happens mm-hmm. and then you can't talk for a while. And then a lot of people just like, you know, slowly drift into islands 
And there are some people who aren't very good at bridging that gap again. For sure. And then there are other people that are able to be like, oh, yeah, we're back, you know, and hooked. Yeah, there's a weird uh, social thing that puts pressure on people. They think that if you don't talk to someone in a certain amount of time, then you're not friends anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. This really good friend of mine from college, I reached out to them for like a big trying to get everybody together type of thing, like huge gathering thing. And they were just like, oh, I was surprised that you invited me. I was like, why? And they're like, well, we haven't talked in forever. And I was like, so what? Shit. Like, <laughs> we used to talk all the time. Like, to me, we're like, yeah, it's, for you, you're saying it's been years, but I feel like we were talking just the other day. And then, yeah. and then they were like, okay, cool. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. And Aww. so, but they were like, they were subscribing to this weird uh what is the word it's like there's a yeah, word I don't for know it a good word common there, knowledge uh, well it's like a or what it's something there's a word that people use in like politics all the time the, the narrative it's almost like a narrative there's oh, this okay. social okay. there's the social narrative that if you don't talk to someone an x amount of time they're not really your friend and it's like what eric was saying no there's just life happens huh. if you're not seeing each other because of you're doing the same things then you just it's just that's what happens you just keep on keeping it's hard on. yeah it's hard doesn't mean you're not friends doesn't mean you didn't develop a relationship that can be a forever relationship it's like it's not like the milk that goes bad in your fridge it's <laughs> yeah and that's that's hard for some people and i think that that is part of it but like i don't know so uh, do you want to know what I give this? Yeah. What do you Whiskey? give this, my guy? Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 because I'm going to have to type on yours. It's not a number thing. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Do it. Mm, damn. Mm. Is that That's like three M's that are capital. Mm, mm, and damn. Then like damn. It, four M's that are lowercase. I got yeah. you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Solid. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say damn? I did. I said, mm, Oh, okay. Okay. Damn. damn. But it's like a lowercase damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lowercase gotcha. damn. With like a semi exclamation point. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely like gotcha. a seven out of 10. Seven okay. out of 10? Yeah. Because this is like, so this is like, would you say that this is your favorite Irish whiskey? 100%. Easily. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. It's, it's that the it best Irish favorite, whiskey I've ever seven? had. It's good. Because, like, last week, I think it was last week, the tip of my tongue was getting tickled all over the place. It was great. So and now it's in the tickled. back of my tongue. And it's, like, smooth and rich and and. Caramely. So, Nat, I want to tell you a story. Oh. So you want to for... tell me a story. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you for the buy audience me a drink who first. Know, oh, wait, he already did. <laughs> when, when I went off to college, <laughs> I lived in Boston and I had a little apartment and I turned 21. It was Bush. And my mom and my, and my stepdad came and visited me and, of course, had a lot of good drinks, a lot of good food. Shortly after that, Anthony came and visited me and spent some time in Boston. And we were now both legally able to drink mm. in Boston. and mm -hmm. Which is almost like a requirement for going to Boston because everything's 21 and up. Yeah, it, Boston's a really weird place. Like when you, they, they do a lot of things. So Anthony and I actually tried to go bowling. Mm. And bowling was like, no, 21, 21 and, up. and up, guys. And at this point in time, we were not 21 when we tried to go bowling. But wild to get turned down. I think Michael and Matthew were there, too. Yeah, they were. Yeah, when you're okay. not 21, if you're in Boston, you're under 21, you're only allowed to go to places that are underground. You can only go to basements. Yes, <laughs> when I visited Eric, we were in, like, 10 basements in, like, one we weekend. Were Boston, 10 basements. Everywhere you go, it's, <laughs> like, go downstairs. <laughs> Yeah. You're, See, the oh, way you're not 21? Go downstairs. Was, it was 10 basements put together, and I was like, oh, no. What? <laughs> well, they had that, too. Austin has this weird thing where every building is like a series of apartments, and then the ground floor, you go down a little bit to the ground floor. So you go down some steps, and then inside of the terrace level 
uh, of the building. And a lot of the buildings have a shop or a store on the ground terrace level, which is technically like a few steps down. And then apartments above it. But then when we okay. went and played Magic, we had to go a whole flight of stairs oh, down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent basement. we went and played Magic the Gathering, and you went down into the terrace level, back to the building, and then there was an old rickety wooden staircase <laughs> that took us down and around, like way Bruh. too deep for a city <laughs> basement, into a, a, a carpentry experience. shop. You had a dwarf experience yes, where you dug 100%, too deep. hundred <laughs> percent. The heart of the mountain was there, Nat. <laughs> yeah. But so so we're going around Boston. We're doing all these things. And Anthony, I, I can't remember what he did, but he wanted he wanted to get me a whiskey or something like that. We go to this whiskey shop and we buy two whiskeys that day. Two. Two. One was because Anthony looked at me and he was like, Dude, what is, uh, this might be good. We got to try this. And that was a honey whiskey. Honey whiskey. A honey whiskey. Okay. It had like a little bee on it. Very cute. And the other one was like their top of the line Irish whiskey. Because even back then, I knew that one of the only whiskeys that I liked were Irish whiskeys. And this was before I really came into my own on whiskey drink. I had just turned 21. And before I was Sweet 21, I only had like... Two whiskeys. So I wasn't drinking underage ever. So we go in and their top of the line whiskey was a that that Anthony got me for my first birthday was a Bushmills 12 year single malt Irish whiskey. Oh, wow. And it was this whiskey. No shot. It was this whiskey. Yeah. I got a good taste or good eye. Look at you go there, guys. Full circle That's what, So this is why I was confused, because when I was looking at it, I was like, wait, this seems familiar. And I remember when the three of us, plus I think Mikoff at least, had Eric's birthday online. Dude. Eric, you had picked <laughs> up a random whiskey, but you didn't like it. And I was like, well, that wasn't this one. But I got it confused because it... Bush Mills, the Bush Mills that we just had reminded me of Boston. I didn't understand why. Now, now I, this was the one that, that you uh, that you got me. Heck yeah! Now I will it say, back then, this was a little too hot for us because I uh, remember us drinking it initially and being like, "Ooh, I don't know about this." Had one. liquor yet? Yeah. <laughs> but coming full circle, our tastes have expanded, and you, you picked a pretty good whiskey for. for Y'all whiskey. Ain't had that this is twelve year. <laughs> It is yeah. twelve year. Wow! Oh. Wow! And I, uh, I remember us going into that whiskey sto- whiskey store and getting two whiskeys, and this was one of them. Full circle, gentlemen. You know, Cheers. I think that trip was also the last Cheers. time I tried to grow up my hair, and then we went to oh. a barber shop. It was. You gave up on that trip. I remember. Uh, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> we were going was- to Eric's like person. They were closed. I was like, I really need to get this like trimmed up. Go to the barbershop. I'm like, yeah. okay, I just want you to like even it out a little bit. Just take a little bit off. Guy takes the freaking clippers, goes... Yeah. yeah, Anthony came out like buzzed. And I was like, Anthony, I thought you were going to... Did you change your mind? He was He's like, like no. I did not. This guy... And I was like, Ooh, This guy didn't hear a single thing I said. Not a good said. look. Now, I will say not Anthony didn't look. have his gorgeous beard back then. Oh, yeah. No, he was a baby face, so he was no. smooth everywhere. Well, we don't know about everywhere. But. Eric. <laughs> you didn't have to say anything. <laughs> you could have just let me. <laughs> you could have just let me I out could've, here. Have, I could have. But you, but, you, but you fucked me up. The, the last that. time I shaved was when I was going to pick my wife up uh, from. This is when we were still dating. I was picking her up from the airport and she walked right past me. She didn't recognize me whatsoever. Uh, and then she was pretty upset about me shaving because she likes she likes the beard but also mm-hmm. because apparently when i shave i look much younger than her and then she feels like she's a grave digger or a baby you, not a grave digger a baby a grave a, digger a cradle a, robber a grave robber cradle, a cradle a cradle, robber. cradle i don't yeah, know what they call a cradle, it cradle cradle robber it's called a cougar there cradle but. digger robbing the crib yeah she's like you look younger than me when you shave and i'm like 
What can I That's say? That ain't, that ain't my problem. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much going on, so you would think the difference is like very negligible. You say you don't but have I much going like on, but you have like too many. You have like the Zorro look without having to like yeah. shape it. That's fair. So, <laughs> is, by the way, audience, like this is I. It's not because I wouldn't grow out more. Like this is it. This is what you get. I. I this is what life dealt me, guys. Like I'm working they, with what life. I got. Wanted him to be a swashbuckler, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my French heritage just just took all of is... my facial hair. <laughs> And flush it down the drain. You know, it's probably a terrible idea, but I wonder if they've already synthesized the like. It's not a hormone, is it? It's um, there's something that is more prevalent that makes hair grow more on the beard, and then it stops growing on the head. Hmm. So it's like it's literally a trade off. Now I will I'm say, not sure. And I, Nat's Nat has both, so that's unfair. Um, true. <laughs> but I to will be... say. Well, yeah. But based on the genetics that I that I've looked at, and from like the genetic, you know, the little blood work things that you've done, which I don't know how accurate they are right now, but I should have a full head of hair until I'm in the grave, which is great because yeah. that's about all I got going. So. Oh my god! Dude, hell yeah! Ash says I looked like a child when I shaved, and so she's like four years younger than me, but I looked like I was five years younger than her. <laughs> So no, I, get I can go that negative nine years if I just shave. <laughs> yeah, I'm I look like I am in my 20s when I shave, which is I can see that terrifying. I, I was like, no. And then I like I think there was like, I don't remember what event happened, but I shaved my face and I saw pictures of it. And I was like, oh, never again. I can. <laughs> I, I think it was our engagement party. Uh, in Houston, I think it was at that townhouse that you guys uh, mm. oh, yeah. saw us at. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had a green shirt on or something like that, like a button down. And I was like, who is that person next to me? Oh, that's me. Nope. No. Never again. Nope. Never again. And then I saw a picture. I saw a picture of our wedding with the full beard, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> never, never again. <laughs> oh man! Apparently, DHT good- is the hormone. DHT dihydrotestosterone Di- it inhibits hydro- hair growth on the scalp, but stimulates beard growth. So, inhibits. Hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think inhibits would mean like stops it uh, dude, but it maybe be, it just slows I, it like not it like probably slows it's it. not like a ball maybe it's not a balding thing but a slowing thing it's definitely just like a part a piecemeal kind of thing i don't think it's like yeah i can't dude, imagine this is like one of the reasons i've been letting my hair grow without cutting it is just like a science experiment because you are a walking so hair hair grows until mm-hmm. it stops and then it goes into hibernation for however long, mm-hmm. and then it falls out and starts over. Correct. So my theory, which every now and then I think about it, I'm like, you're wrong, Anthony, you're wrong. This isn't how this works. <laughs> but maybe it is. My theory was that oh my God, if you Anthony. stop cutting it, there's more. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's right, but I do think it's right. What do you mean right. by more? Like if you if you if if you, for the rest of the class, <laughs> if you cut it, then and it and it doesn't grow because it's hibernating, then it, right. it's stuck there for however long it takes. And then if it's inhibited at its growth, it's gonna like take forever to ever show back. So like maybe. If you stopped cutting it and just let it keep getting longer and longer, like it'll eventually it'll be back and it'll stay around. It'll figure itself out, you know. But it doesn't sound right, like no, logically. No, I don't know if that makes no. sense. <laughs> oh. oh man. Pitch will not make it any better, Anthony. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Raising your pitch won't change the truth. <laughs> well, good whiskey tasting there, buds. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I well, wish I had I a bottle of that right now. Same. Yeah, same. I guess I think if for I'll me, to... uh, <laughs> this the the only thing I would say is that I think this sits right underneath. I, I like this as an Irish whiskey. I I think it sits right beneath a Red Breast Twelve for me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I do like the Red Breast Twelve a little bit better. I think I get a little bit more of the dried fruit sweetness instead of the confectionery sweetness which i tend i think i like that a little bit more and then i think the finishing that red breast does brings out a little bit more of those fruity notes that i like Mm. so i think that puts us at like sitting right below my daily drinker status although i would drink this daily i think it puts it i get a four point like close, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like right below. Like it's it, almost if, there. If Red Breast Twelve didn't exist, this would probably be my go-to. This is yeah. the first one I've put on my shopping list since JJ Corey. Ooh. Now, of course, this doesn't count for Frey Ranch, Frey Ranch which you can only buy yeah. online, and it's way better than everything in the world. Um, yeah. Wow. Maybe not Bardstown. <laughs> it's you have to do a. I mean, we have we have Church and State. We have Bardstown and Free Ranch. Yeah. It's just, it's you know, it's just different iterations, different strokes for different Oh, folks. did I mention uh, San Japan is the con? Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. San Japan. Japan, yeah. San I'll Japan. give it a look. Hold on, let me go ahead and add a tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. San Japan. It's the well, largest that, anime they... and gaming convention in South Texas, because there aren't any others. Because there's none. Because Pac guys. South is gone. Yep. Yep, and there's like the only thing that's even close is um, Katsukon or something like that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm introducing a nice little um, sec- segment here where I come up with a sec- a chaser whiskey to go along with our tasting. Today is going to mm. be the Still Austin mm. Straight Bourbon oh, Whiskey. Oh, yeah. The musician is the art that's provided here, and they are a bourbon uh, dist- uh distillery distillery within austin texas there this is actually really good i believe it won a few awards if you guys want to look it up but i picked this up because i couldn't find the actual like recent award winner but i know that yeah. this won some awards or it was related to something that was uh, so their awarded. their recent award winner is the cask strength rye yeah and that got a goal, a double gold at the World Spirits Competition. So this straight bourbon is very interesting in the sense that it's very corn forward, but it's floral in the sense that you're not getting like that kind of weird, um, uh, almost buttery mouth mouthfeel that comes from too much corn. And then that, that kind of weird curve to the taste profile that makes you kind of Throw your brow and be like, why do I feel like I just ate too much popcorn? It's interesting. You can eat too it. much popcorn. Anthony, we'll talk about we'll talk later. It's okay. That's fine. It's okay. I didn't know that was a thing. No, no, you 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 can't. You can't. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I like think I've seen boy. still Austin. Yeah, I've just seen a few every now and then. It's pretty rare. Uh, but every now and then they'll get a bottle, a few bottles at place near me. Or there's just a very similar like label. They are one of the more eclectic labels that I've seen. Um, I like it. The artwork is kind of interesting, and the bottle shape is evocative. Got, I guess it's got, a, I it's got a cool little. It's different. It's unique. It's a cool vibe. It's and cool that vibe. the musician actually won gold at the there it is. competition. So for anybody who doesn't know that that kind of goes a um, there's like bronze, which is like the what a, a whiskey should be for average, which is it's a hundred point scale. So a seventy to eighty is a bronze, eighty to eighty nine silver, ninety to ninety five is a gold, and then mm. ninety five to a hundred is double gold. So they're they have their most recent whiskey got a double gold. Their other two whiskeys, the artist and the musician, both got gold. Not bad, guys. No. Just not bad. I'm just saying. 
pretty good. And usually, if you're looking at a double gold on the World Spirits, uh, you know, competition, you're looking at what usually is a really good whiskey. Generally speaking, yeah, so, might not be to your taste, but it's usually good. Weird thing happened the other day. I was uh, finishing off like the last little bit of uh, what is our? Oh my god, it's blanked. Old Forester Rye. Okay. Oh, yeah. And for the first time, like very heavily, I was like, "Oh my god, that's apple." Really? Mm. And I, are the flavors awakening within you, Anthony? Well, I was thinking maybe it was just because there was so much room in the bottle that it evaporated a lot. You know, you could have <laughs> just diluted. said yes. No, no, I know how bad I am at this. I'm, I'm not faking it. I'm trying to help you, no. Anthony. Come on, man. No. Oh my god. I mean, actually, I was like, I was really satisfied with that Bushmills. I got to go get some of that. That was good. For sure. Now, I will say, Wait, I, we I don't know when we'll get to try it, but I was able to get my hands on the single barrel ash strength rye from Old Fort. Ooh. So that is on our list. Now we we still have to do a handoff soon where I get some whiskeys out to uh to both of y'all. Ooh. But a single barrel, the old Forester single barrel. You mean that like this Forrester one that has been barrel. waiting for you guys? Yeah, Ooh. we gotta we gotta do that one. We we gotta do some handoffs. I don't know when we're gonna do it, but we need uh, maybe New Year's or something. We should we should have like we should a New do Year's something. Come here, something. come here, come here, come here. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell. Come well, here. I, I had I have to come visit you guys anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so we just, I, I, we just it's have in the, to get it's together, in the works. Maybe at the end of the year or something like that. Yeah. And just trade a bunch of different stuff that we need to try. I'll bring all my bottles so we can like portion everything out. And that'll give us a bunch of episodes. I got a bunch of cool new stuff to try from unique barrels that nobody will ever be able to have again to normal stuff. It'll be good. Let's go. We got... One of I'm those is it. courtesy of Cody, which will be, uh, I think, Cody's first episode with us because he was part of a him picking a barrel. And mm. I have a bottle of that that is unopened. Mm. So we could enjoy that together and have a special guest for the podcast. Has some je ne sais quoi. Ash says, uh, <laughs> Ash says come hang out in the snow. And uh, I was going to say, we could have like a real bourbon experience. No, go I go drinking bourbon and hunting. Nashville. That would be cool. Oh, wow. I think it would be cool to like meet in Asheville. Yeah, I'd, I'd for be sure. down for that. You don't want to go, what? you don't want to go drink bourbon and hunt? Hunt some deer. I we I, do. I, I'm I'm down with that too. I no, thought that was the same thing. No, was that not the same thing? You're supposed to say no. No drinking and guns. <laughs> no, oh. dr- no drinking with weapons. It's terrible. Like, you can drink afterwards. Yeah, I I look. <laughs> I've I assumed never been known the to best make in good you. decisions. I just assumed. That I was making a joke, and y'all like, yeah, letter. let's go kill and each other. Go. I'm like, no. no, that is not what we said. <laughs> we assumed the response. I've been trying this entire time, guys. I don't know why this is a problem. My God, <laughs> oh my God. So, uh, uh segue. Yeah, into segue. our sponsor. Um, into our yes. sponsor. Our, oh, yes. Our sponsor for the week. I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. That's right. It is us. We are the sponsor. Yes. Help us. Yes. Please. Please. Yes. For the subscribe. Love of God. I, Go to the doobly I can't keep Press putting that subscribe thousands button. of dollars into this every day. I can't yeah. keep going on the streets, guys. <laughs> all of my this... all of my paw paws money is running out. Like, look, just... I went to a Fever. local river with a uh, a sifter, and it just I found no gold, guys. So, like, we Oof. need. We Oof. need help. Uh, one of these days, I'll have a Patreon that y'all could subscribe if y'all, if y'all want to help out. Days. One of the days. One of the days. Yo, there's but something better than then, Patreon nowadays, apparently, by the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I think it's called Feet I think Thor might talk about it because, like, Patreon is stagnated forever and you don't really get anything as a person that buys into it. And then there's this other platform that is exactly like Patreon, but they actually have, like, features and stuff. Huh. Which Send is it my way it's, called, it's not called OnlyFans, Ash. It sounds I mean, like OnlyFans. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it is. It's only what feet. What is it? It's called Only Feet. 
I, what if? I okay, but real, real talk. I knew. Just it. as a gag one day, what if we did an only whiskey page, <laughs> and we just took provocative pictures of Whiskies. whiskey bottles? Mm-hmm. I hate that. So With much. like their cork I off hate that so or like much. The, the label unraveling nope. no 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 no, no. Nope. they have, have to be nudes they dope. have to be with nudes nudes you can only like do it when you're having nude. like ramen or udon or even spaghetti oh, oh, you have yeah. to have the whiskey we, next we to the nudes whiskey <laughs> next to nudes <laughs> oh man oh ash got it only corks that'd be hilarious only, only corks, corks. that's go. hilarious i love that <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious. That. Let's that is really good. <laughs> that is actually really good. Oh I, I don't know. I don't know if that'll ever be a serious thing we do, but I 100% think we should do it as a gag one. I think it should still be done. Where we have, we, we essentially say, hey, it's a, I wonder if it has like a one time subscription or something like, like Jesse Cox does for Twitch, where they could just pay a $1 charge of like $2 and we put like 100 different pictures. We make like a calendar. For it or something like that. You could put some of the corks like between your toes. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. I hate I hate it here. Oh, we could do uh we could do a little video of us dropping the corks and trying to get them to pop up and land on the on the top. That's get that's wine up, corks Anthony. though. Have you done that with a wine cork? That's how you test if it's yeah. real. Yeah. If the cork is real? You take a wine cork and if you put it like this. Uh-huh. And then you twist it. If it if you drop it from the height of how tall it was, it should bounce and then land straight up and down like like it was. And if it doesn't do that, it's not real cork. It's it's just based on the the elasticity of like cork material with the diameter mm-hmm. of corks. It's really cool. Kind of looks like magic when you do it. You like drop it and then boom, just like balances perfectly. So cool. So then, okay. yeah, try it. What did uh, I, I, well actually before we just go dive into I think what is going to be the main topic of the week. Has anyone played something different? Yeah, well, that we haven't played together. Uh... <laughs> I might have technically, I technically slightly played Overcook. <laughs> Two, but that was just to set it up for my mother-in-law and my wife. Uh, okay. Actually, I played Overcooked one with them a little bit, which I mean, everyone's played Overcooked. It's a fun game, yeah, but played yeah, up is fun. so much better. The played up game I might have mentioned. Played up is really yeah. good. You played yeah, it? Yeah. 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 I haven't played, played it good. yet, but I've seen it's it, so and I good. already can tell like it is. It's just at, the next evolution at one point, of Overcooked. When I was wrong when I initially talked about played up, and I said that it is harder than Overcooked. It is more punishing than Overcooked, yes. But because you have so much control over what your job is and the layout of your store rather than having just chaos thrown at you, I think it's actually easier in a way. There's way more to do, way more going on. It's probably harder for someone that's brand new to gaming. But if you're not brand new to gaming, this is it for might you. be easier. I don't know. I it's definitely more that's rewarding. Reasonable. Like, Like Overcooked is like a party game. It's cute, it's yeah. funny, it's chaotic, but it's just the same thing over and over again with a slight different setting. While, like, played up, like, I get to choose my recipe, I choose my restaurant layout, I choose everything. Like, it's just so cool. Yeah. It's fucking great. I, it's a good one. I booted up Farm Simulator 2022, uh, but I didn't have time to actually play it. Um, I. Yeah, farm simulator. You it's one of those. So on PlayStation, whatever you get, like free games every month. It's one of those free games that I got. Like it's permanently Anthony, I, on my thing. Anthony, I don't care yeah. about your farm simulator. Yeah. It was really funny. The intro was wild. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad that you had a good time. But I think that's all that I technically played that wasn't the best game out right now. Nat, have you played anything else? Actually, I played one other game. Have I had time to play anything else, Eric? That's fair. That's fair. Have I had time outside of the three days that I spent waiting for you to show up? I showed up, and then you <laughs> were the there. the last day. I was on all day, though. 
I played one other very disappointing game. You being on one day, I feel like I feel like I'm actually I, I understand now. I understand where okay. Mel's coming from. You being there for one day does not excuse the other two days. That's fair. <laughs> now I'll be real. So uh, so well, you never explained the audience, to Nat what you happened. Yeah, what oh, happened? You told okay, me. okay. So I told I told Nat I was like, I'm gonna my my wife was gone for the weekend, so I'm going to be on, and we're going to play this game together, and I'm going to be down. So Friday happens, and I'm working, I'm working, and then it's like 4.45, 5 p.m., and I'm like, man, okay, I'm going to get on, because I think Nat's probably going to be on, going to be home from work soon. I'm going to I'm gonna go. I will be. But I was like, I was like looking at a computer and I was super focused and like things kept popping up because work stuff kept coming up and they were emailing me like last minute. I'm like fixing stuff I'm like, Oh my gosh, guys. So I go and I'm like, I just need to take a breather and I go and I'm sitting on my couch and I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to mindlessly scroll for a second. I just need, a, a, I need a, a second, a second. And the next thing I know it's 1130 PM. <laughs> And my phone is like falling on my face. <laughs> and uh, I just passed the fuck out. Like, I, like I was you just died. gone. You died. Yeah, I get it. I and get it. Uh, so then I, I ended up being up like that entire night. But I, it was like one of those where I'm like, gosh, darn it. Now it's going to suck. And I'm not going to get to sleep. Uh, it's, everything was screwed up. Okay. And so then I, I got on and I game for a bit, but like nobody else was on. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to, I don't know if they started. I don't know if they played. I didn't, you know I didn't want to like go and fact. just jump ahead of people. You know, so, for a fact. Anyway, so continue. I ended up just chilling on RuneScape and watching uh, The Mentalist, which I don't know if y'all seen, but The Mentalist is a great show. Okay. Um, very fun. It's, it's from like 2007, 2008. It ran for seven or eight seasons uh the main guy who does plays the mentalist or patrick jane in the show phenomenal actor but so that's what i did and then i woke up on saturday and one of my friends who i play volleyball with he was like hey i have a ton of guys in town some of my best friends and we really want to get a volleyball group today and so i ended up and i was like okay because i well, I have this giant volleyball group that I run and there's like a hundred people in it. And I'm usually the one that brings out all of the nets and sets them up. And then we play and he really wanted to play. And then some other people wanted to play. And some other people were like, Oh, we really want to go at like three, two thirty PM. I was like, cool. And he was like, Oh, we can't get there till like 6 PM. I was like, okay, cool. I I'll go out at two thirty and I'll, I'll play for a bit. I ended up playing volleyball from like 2.30 to like 8.30. Nuts. And so that that took out like the entirety of my day. Because remember, I went to sleep at like 4 a.m. So I woke up at like noon. So I, I like immediately after my shower and breakfast, I, I was now going to play volleyball for eight and a half hours. Solid timing. Yeah. See, like Nat, and so that Nat and I wake up at like adult times nowadays, like four, <laughs> yeah, and five. Eric's because I have to college. get the time in. <laughs> if I if college. I don't wake up at five, I do not have time to do the things that I need to do in the game that we're <laughs> about to talk about. So, and so then Sunday comes along, and finally I have a free day. I get on, I see all's text, and I'm like, oh yeah. I'm down. And then I get on and me and Anthony play for, I, I think I ended up playing for like 12 hours. I maxed yeah. my character and yep. like that day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he speed run the shit out of that campaign. Dude, I don't know how the fuck Eric does it because <laughs> I, I played a lot and knowing, knowing well, now what things. I do know now, I read, no, I didn't read things. I just, Matt I did the wrong stuff. things. I did the wrong things. And I, I often do read stuff as well. So that's my fault. Anyway. I do read really fast, by the way. I did read everything. What I didn't Shut do up, Eric. <laughs> was I had already seen all of the cin- most of the cinematics. So you skipped all of them. So I didn't have to watch a lot of the cinematics because mm-hmm. I had already seen them. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this is where we're at in the story. Cool. Mm-hmm. 
I've already seen. And then I would watch the first like five seconds of a cinematic. I'd be like, I remember this one. Going. Yeah. 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 So, Bruh. Eric, earlier you talked about, did you, was this intentional? Did you say waifu? No, I, I thought I said wife. Okay. You, your transition was like. Just making I sure. See. I see. That's right. Just making sure. I mean, I think it's okay. My yeah, wife yeah, is my yeah. wife. Also fun. But yeah. I wanted to give you all a pro tip and anybody though? else in the audience. Yeah. Well, I mean, she calls me hubbin or husbando and Hubbin. stuff like that. Husbando or something. Like that. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But uh, for for all of you out there, it is it is beyond awesome when you rename your wife as your contact, W H Y F U, because that is how you get the like car play and stuff. To audibly say waifu. Wow. <laughs> this man is living <laughs> in 20, 2050, guys. Wow. Look, when we were moving. Truly prolific stuff. When we were moving and I had to like drive back and forth by myself. And every time she texted me, it would say like her name. And then eventually... When when I named it like W I F U, it was like Weefu. I'm like Weefu. What? Stupid. And so then I just Stupid. started changing it over and over again to try to get it to say it right, and eventually I found it. I was like, See, the thing is, like, that's a great idea. <laughs> I love that idea. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. My problem is, I come up with nicknames that I don't need <laughs> for people who have names that work perfectly fine on voice calls like my mom is now the birth giver in my phone <laughs> you didn't want to give her didn't need to do you didn't that. want to call her spawn to... point no spawn point is terrible dude spawn a is... kid did that like a seven-year-old did that to his mom and she was like oh, she God. saw it and she was like what and what he's literally he's like playing like fortnite or minecraft and he goes dude. am i wrong <laughs> and then she's just like dying because he doesn't even look at her like, like, what do you want me to tell you, mom? Fuck. Jesus. Oh, my God. Just get with the freaking times, mama. Disgusting. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. But it's good to know that you're on the waifu stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about the game that we've been all playing because we've been dancing. Ah, guys, I got my last time. two levels by just doing fishing and herbalism and mining. Yeah. So we wow. have been playing the new World of Warcraft expansion, The War Within. Mm. which there is so much to talk about. So many interesting things that mm -hmm. I, I would love to go. I didn't over. finish the campaign. Mm -hmm. You mean, the you, have you wait, 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 just for which part of the, yeah. Have you caught up to the part that requires you to be level 80? Nope. I'm still okay. in the arachnophobia zone. Okay. So you're still in Ajka head. Okay. So I, I don't think we need to go over any of the uh, the spoilers for the stories or anything like that. No. I think more interesting, I think generally the story itself is probably one of the, the best stories we've seen from the Warcraft team in this a long time. This is the time. best campaign that they've put out recently. From what I've heard, this, I have I, not been paying I, attention. I, I disagree with that. And this is where my, my biggest controversy is going to probably be with the game in general. The okay. story part is good. And I think I talked a little bit about this with Nat. But I think, Anthony, you, weren't, you, had, you had already gotten off or you weren't there that day. Mechanically, I do not think this campaign or the main story quests for this campaign were very enjoyable. What do you mean by the mechanically? Story, How, wait, time out. How actually, can you say that when you bum rush through it without reading anything? Going from point no, 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 A to no, no, point no, no. B, no, it's no, no, not... No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking okay. about, Anthony. Okay. The story parts, the reading parts, and the 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 cinematics, and the story that's going on, very good. One of the best we've seen from Warcraft. Actually doing the quests, playing through the quests, the technical parts of doing the quests was not very enjoyable to me. I think it's been great. That's fair. That's fair. I think a lot of the other stuff in the game to this point has been really, really good. I think mechanically, the game in general is in a really good state, better than it's been in a long time. I just, there were so many quests that I was like, this is just 
a weird amalgamation of different mechanics that aren't really the fun parts of World of Warcraft. I disagree because like there's a v- insanely good variety, a little bit of everything, a little bit of nostalgia for like the oh go kill twelve of these things, but at the same time go do this. And the biggest thing that they've done for me is that the bike is fun to ride despite anything else going on because of sky riding or whatever they call it. Like you're you're flying around, you can move so fast, it is so satisfying. You can you can fly through all of that stuff at it's light true. speed. You're not stuck on a mount that can't fly anymore. It, it's it's fast sky riding is and it's awesome. I do agree. Though I don't know what it's like to play a healer and playing a tank through the story is incredible because it's just it's so fast. So hold up. I have pushback. Yeah. Because well, this might be just me because I don't think I've specced properly for leveling a tank. Um but I will say leveling on the damage aspect of my spec, it's so much easier because I don't have any downtime. I don't have to stop and heal. I just go. That's how it is on I keep going. That's how it is on my demon hunter tank, too. Okay. Non-stop, so pull that's, everything. That's how it is for a healer as well. Even for an elite. So, but is so it slower to spectral. kill is what I wonder about. On the yeah, healer. 100% it's slower. So, it's, like, so I feel like for I, for sure. I wonder if that slowness is what is the big difference. It could be. But I, so here's the thing. Actually fighting monsters, that's what I want to do during quests. Like engaging with the mechanics that World of Warcraft, in my opinion, does well, which is the combat mechanics, is what I want to be doing during the quest. A great example is like the orphan quest the 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 quest where i control a little robot and have to sneak through a camp like these stealth mechanics these talking mechanics these rts mechanics the tower defense mechanics all of these different things that are over 50 percent of the main storyline quests i think when you get to the side quests a lot of them are combat based quests and those are actually more enjoyable like those are what I wanted to do. The thing is, I haven't done but a the single main one story of those. quest. <laughs> you haven't? I've done you zero just... side quests. I was saving those for my alts. Yeah. yeah. Bro. I actually feel that the side quests were, in a lot of ways, more enjoyable than they the main story quests. They were definitely more quest. enjoyable. There's and one the quest in particular. Sto- yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. And the main story quests really try to do all of these different mechanics. And, if, you know, for some people, it's going to be hit or miss. I think, Anthony, you, you hit it on the head. They do offer a break. Or a different form from the basic gameplay that is World of Warcraft. I think my biggest thing is that, and this is going to be different for other people, is that I'm playing World of Warcraft. When I'm playing World of Warcraft, I want to be engaging in the mechanic that is the base of World of Warcraft. And so I have other games that I enjoy more or those other types of mechanics that I would rather go to for those mechanics. I don't want a break from World of Warcraft when I'm playing World of Warcraft. And I totally understand how different people are going to see that differently, and that's not going to... Like, people who only play World of Warcraft, I think this might be good for them. It just yeah, happened to be a be detriment for, for me in general for the, the main story quest, for sure. Because I'm like, I want to go around healing doing damage i want to do more of the dungeons i want to do more of the delves i want to do i wanted those to be like the main thing that i interact with but instead i would say at least six of my 12 hours of playtime was talking to people clicking to people and a lot of times i wasn't even getting good the good story bits weren't from a lot of those interactions they were from the getting the initial quest and i'm like oh this is the story this part's cool i want to talk to this person and then they're like okay talk to these go click on these 15 other people to talk to them but when i talk to them there's no interesting lore or story it's just like cool like oh they didn't give me anything new right and then go back 
And I think that's where it was kind of unfortunate is that the story was really cool, but interacting with the main story quests was themselves as weren't as enjoyable for me. You could say they're boring. Yeah. So yeah, it's okay. for me, something that kept the uh, enjoyment factor up, like basically if you see going through the story quest as a roller coaster my roller coaster was enhanced for me at least because i had the two gathering uh, things herbalism and mining and fishing um which fishing is more of a like kind of like oh i need a break type of thing but when you're going from point a to point b and it's like oh there's a thing let me see if i can find it and you're flying around and you get to do really cool fun flying maneuvers instead of just point a to point b you're like weaving in and out of things trying to find exactly where that node is like it was kind of like just adding you know little loop-de-doops and swerves and stuff to the to the roller coaster loop i will say traveling and professions especially gathering professions are the best that they've ever been in. Yeah. I like I kind of wish like I know it might break the game. I kind of wish you could have every gathering profession kind of like New World where you yeah, you can log, you can mine, you can do all of them because for the people like me who really enjoy that, you know, it's just it's a thing. Like in Valheim, I, you come across a bush and you're like, "Ooh, can I pick that bush? I can. Yay, I got the thing." And it just it's awesome. A hundred percent. This is a hundred percent where I would love, I would have loved to see something more stolen from something like RuneScape where, yeah, you can literally do anything. It may, you may have to level it up. You may have to put some time in it to get there, but you can do anything. Yeah. Right. Guys, I think it just snowed in like New Mexico. Oh, wow. Snowed? In New yeah, Mexico? Ari is here, and he said, no shot, it snowed over there. Oh, wait, no, he's talking... Oh, I can't read. Yeah, dude, it snows right. here, man. A lot. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Lies. To see. Last season was a, was a, was a slow season. It's going to snow even more. Need you, you, need to, Ari, we you need, need to come need up to here when, out. when your wife comes up here. Anthony, we need to figure out this, this stream That's together I was confused. That's, I was, so I can see these chats. From your channel. Oh, I mean, you usually you usually push the button. I don't know how that button works. I haven't even <laughs> you seen pushed that button. the button. I pushed it. I pushed it today. No, uh why I don't why don't yeah. I see it? Where am I supposed to see yeah. it? I thought I saw it in OBS. No, oh, no, no. I did. I pressed it so that we could stream together. I don't think so, uh, Tim. We should we, we should <sighs> do more testing on that and see if we can get it working. Push but the button again. Push the button again. I, did. I just did. I just did. I just pressed it. Oh, okay. I see it on Twitch notifications, but it, it didn't. It says awaiting response. It didn't pop up in OBS this time. Here. But um, but there are a lot of things that I feel are in a great spot in this expansion. One, the story is back where I would like it to be. Oh. It feels more grounded. It feels more like the things that I care about from World of Warcraft. Like, it isn't as outlandish as some of the other, like, the past two expansions have been, or three expansions. And I really enjoy that. I think that the class mechanics are on point. I love the hero talents. I love how each class looks and feels. I've watched streams of different people playing. Mage looks cool. Shaman looks cool. Like all of these different things, they look fun. They look cool and they have a lot of flavor. I think they've condensed it down a lot to make it more enjoyable. Um, there are some things though that I feel are the worst they've ever been. Um, resource management is a good one. What do you mean? right now like the game. i went through a dungeon i i don't think i ever dropped below 90 percent mana in a heroic oh you think that there's an issue in terms of the fact that there's no, no. drawback from yeah i could just wasting, wasting i could abilities. press whatever i wanted as fast as i wanted to like running out of mana didn't even seem possible i tried to run out of mana now and i could not run out of mana wow and that's could change a lot in raids, right? Because everything right. changes when you start change from a two-minute to four-minute fight 
to a 15 minute fight you know in a mythic Mm -hmm. but it did feel really weird i felt like there was no way that i could have trouble healing i have so many good tools and I did not have to worry about resources. Yeah, but it, you have the wherewithal. You got the knowledge. But it, you have the juice. But it's kind of weird when there's so many classes that don't have a thing that runs out. So they can yeah. go on theoretically forever. But then the yeah. mana users can't. So and I, this and that would be kind of what I'm talking about. I think resource management is a thing that was present for every class in classic Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. Very much so. Mists of Pandaria started to introduce some classes where their resource management changed a lot. And then since then, it's kind of been obfuscated out. I really did not feel it as a healer until this expansion. And then I started Mm. looking into it and I was like, interesting. This is poopy? Boo-boo butter? Well, or is it it like... Like I said, rating could change the game entirely you know what's missing what's it would that? be nice if all resource management was able to be sustained and never run out right but every class had a method of running out of resources and that method if you keep doing it and you don't finish the job gets you dead so like my gets demon hunter could start trading its life for power you know it doesn't have enough fury and, whatever i'm gonna use my literal I'm just gonna keep on life going. yeah and i'm gonna power through uh a healer that uses mana you you start actually burning the mana and and, and it's the, gonna run out and when it runs out you're done it's not gonna recover everyone dies because yeah. you know but you pushed it and you took a risk and maybe and if you're right you feel amazing if you're wrong and, too bad and you that's how fucked. it felt. And there are classes that had those types of mechanics already. Like mm. the Warlock was able to do Blood Siphon or uh, Life Tap so that they could turn health into mana to get more damage. The Paladin has ha- used to have, it's changed now a little bit, um, but it used to have an ability to sacrifice your own health for a quick heal to others, right? If you didn't have mana. Oh, okay. So they had these types of mechanics, but a lot of them have been obfuscated out so that Mm. that isn't quite the case. And so I'm not saying it's bad yet, but it is something that I noticed just from having such a deep history in healing in the sense that it was immediately apparent to me when I did my first heroic. And I was like, oh, we have a hectic moment. I'm pressing all these... How's my mana? And then I looked at my mana and I was like, 98%. What, what do you what mean? Do you, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. The the tank just pulled a crap ton of stuff and I had to try real hard to keep everybody alive. And I only spent 2% mana. Yeah. So and, this... it, and it felt weird only because I knew it should have been more than 2% mana in any previous expansion. I would have been at 50% mana and now I have to like juggle. I have to make sure I don't like if we run into that situation again, I'm gonna have to be careful, you know, that type of thing. If you use lay on hands, does it use all your mana? Um, so you do sacrifice a good bit of uh mana on lay of hands. It used to be a hundred percent. Far, yeah, it isn't the same anymore. But I noticed and the the same. It's more the cool situation down. when I was leveling up my mage in the pre patch. My mage never needed to drink water. A hundred percent mana was always. So it takes no mana, uh, and the only thing is the cooldown. Yeah. Yeah. So you get one per fight, essentially. Yeah. Insane. But the weird thing is, like, I don't mind it. I think that the resource management thing was a bit weird for mana users, where theirs runs out, and rogues and warriors and demon hunters, they don't run out. But that is a big thing that is missing that I wish every class had the opportunity to deplete yourself. Yeah. I feel like it adds a depth mechanically. That is part of the reason that I love healing. It's definitely not everything. It doesn't change it entirely, but it gives you at least so far in this expansion, 
it essentially took something off the list that I had to think about when I was doing heroics, where I was like, I was just not worried. I was like, every time I looked over, I was at 95% or greater mana. And I was like, this just feels weird. Like that I, and then I just am like, do I even have to worry about this? Like, can no. my mana get below 95%? No. Like Anything that is outside weird. of like the normal, uh, anything outside of like a normal dungeon is like low interest, high reward bullshit. Like I've, I haven't run into a situation where my, like my health or my survivability as a warrior and I I, dude leveling as a warrior in classic and fucking, uh, burning crusade. Holy shit. I will say, I, I understand why, the game has kind of gone the direction that it's gone and ended up where it's ended up. And I think now, if you were to, if I were to debate somebody and say, hey, is the game harder now or was it harder in Classic and Burning Crusade? I am on the side of that the highest content now is much harder than it was then. Like Mythic Plus 15 and Mythic Rating is just mechanically harder now. And I a hundred percent and it's interesting and there's a lot there, but I miss the days where the game in totality was designed on a curve of difficulty where this content was this difficulty. And if you Mm. could not solve that difficulty, did not get to experience that content because it means that it created a system where you, People like us who have played the game for so many years have to grind a bunch of mindless content to be able to enjoy and do the fun, interesting content. Not to say that there aren't good parts of the the easy content, but just that, like... For the lion's share of it, you have to get through the draws to get to the interesting bits. It's like, I have to do this, for example, there's a really cool... Um, set of mechanics in the there's a a a b dungeon where you're going through and it's like a Mm. metery and there are some really cool mechanics in the boss fights i did the normal dungeon and the follower to kind of get used to the mechanics and it was just mindless i could get hit by all the mechanics Mm -hmm. and now i've done that dungeon like four or five more times and i've done the heroic version of that dungeon. and i'm like this is a really coolly designed dungeon and i'm gonna have to sit here and do the unfun version of it 20 more times yeah before they release the mythic version of this dungeon and it doesn't even matter what my i could have gone in greens and done the hero like they they don't let you sign up for the random dungeon until you get a certain eye level you could do that dungeon in heroic like 40 eye level below that with a group of our caliber like we three could go through right now and easily do this dungeon yeah. in heroic whenever we could easily do the mythic version now you think mythic, mythic, mythic plus new mythic meta plus two one. tank one healer yeah new meta Hey, we could do a tap haven plays where we try to go as far as we can on mythic plus with just three people Hell yeah. like that could be a thing It'd be really uh, difficult know. to get above <laughs> Mythic plus three. <laughs> I think Mythic plus three to five would be where we top out, but I think we could do it. You know the uh, the hardest content though in the in in WoW right now in the War Within is actually uh, mining. Uh, I have died the most to mining. Mining. I've died twice. That's mining. hilarious. Mining. <laughs> from the from the thing that explodes outward. Yeah. Uh, it, it throws yeah. out. It throws out yeah. dynamite. It throws out little mi- dynamite <laughs> stuff that could kill you. Yeah. Okay. I was like, like, it. Yeah. I've died literally what? twice to that. That's the most things that have killed like, me. I got hit once with it, and I was like, notes? "Why is the why is the mining stuff attacking me? This is weird." Yeah, I tried to tank it the first time. Obviously, you, you can tank. Well. You can tank like two, one. but if they it's half your health, they stack up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You so can once take there's one. two in one spot, you're dead. Do they specifically yeah. make it so that it's like half your health? Like I think it does. Like, hey, it it does way, percentage like, value. It's gonna percentage. I think it's fifty percent. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I was like, it's nuts. That sounds awfully specific. <laughs> that would one shot others. Yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, it's um, 
it's it's very interesting. There's some there's so many different things that I'm like, I I still stand by what I said last time. If you like me think that healing in an MMO is the coolest mechanic and the uh, the best game mechanic ever invented, and you find that fun, there is still nothing better than World of Warcraft. Yep. They're just they, nothing comes close. I wholeheartedly agree with the, that statement that I said last week. And this expansion is the best WoW expansion I think we've had in a while. Wait, I hmm. think I had more fun going through the the Dragon Isles main story quest, but the story is far better in this one. Um, it's fair. The like we've talked about in the past, like I used to. WoW used to be very flat. Um, but now, thanks to skywriting and thanks to almost every class that I've seen having their mechanics, the rotation, have some part of it be kind of randomized where it's like, oh, you triggered a thing. Now that you've triggered this, you're going to do that. And then you're going to do that. And you're going to do this. It's almost like you're playing a song. Proc based. But, but it's cool because it's like you're playing a song and then you get the opportunity to swap to a different tune for a moment and then you go back to your normal song and then you swap back song. and and it's just okay. it's really yeah. neat cuz you're like you're doing your thing and then you you change it and so it feels like it's got a rhythm to it like there's just a different mm -hmm. basically tempo and it keeps you on your toes it's not constantly the same exact thing over and over again and it's insanely satisfying if you're playing a uh, fi fire mage and suddenly you get pyroblast non-stop because there's like a super proc and it's like <laughs> pyroblast 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 <laughs> and yeah you push that button as fast as you can because you're like oh. that happens with holy shock on holy paladins oh too. yeah there are literally some times where i'll get the proc because one of my talents, when I am in Holy Avenger mode, where I have the wings, my Holy Shock has a 50% chance, essentially, to reduce the cooldown of my next Holy Shock mm. to zero. So I can just click it again. Dude. And so there are some times where I can sit there and just Holy Shock. I'm like... I, I, I'm like... Um, what's his name from Full Metal Alchemist when he's, when he's on the... Uh, when he's on oh, agony, um, he's like, uh, Armstrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. no. Uh, um, what's his name? Mustang. Mustang. Yeah. I feel like Mustang, where he's just like, <sighs> and the, the the guy's just blowing up over and over again. Dude, that's like, such a good fight. Oh. It is such a good fight. But so I've never, I've never asked this. I or maybe we've talked about it, but I just don't remember. Where would y'all rank the World of Warcraft expansions that you've played? That I've like. Played? How would you rank? Them? Like, I mean, which are it's... your favorites? Which, like, how do they compare to this one? Like, okay. Sh and can try, I go first? Try to minimize the nostalgia from it and, and really just... boil it down to, like, mechanically or gameplay how you felt about it. Before, you, before we go, small thing, I can't wait to play my Paladin tank because having to choose between making myself tankier or healing somebody is great great dichotomy it's a wonderful it's a wonderful problem to have man yeah. okay go eric go, go nat okay. oh hey N nat don't feel so bad when you call me eric all the time i just called you eric there you go dude i do it all the time it's with, it's for all my <laughs> you loved do it ones. comically I, I mix all of you i mix up all of you it's terrible it does, it does. um oh my god okay um so my obvious top is burning crusade um there's no, I can't even take the nostalgia out of it. Like there it's was up, something. Up. Yeah, I can't because it was how I learned how to raid. Like it was everything. Like it introduced me to how WoW ex operates. It's like, especially with some of the things that are available now within this expansion. Um I just find it so hard for me to look back at any of the expansions that I played after that and be like, yeah, one of those is better. And it could also be because that's the farthest I ever got in rating content. So I will say hands down, full stop. There is no competition for me. Burning Crusade was the best expansion. Story-wise... 
mechanics wise, experience wise, just overall, it was Burning Crusade for me. And that was because like it, it not only gave me uh, a frame of reference for a style of game that I didn't know that I was going to love, but it also put people in my life that I still think of to this day or still interact to with to this day. So I can't say anything wrong with Burning Crusade. It's the reason why this podcast exists. I'll, I'll say that. Huh? Huh? Um, okay. After that is... Um, Man, probably Legion. I would probably say Legion was probably the, the best experience just because there was a lot of like sparkly candy for me to kind of run into. And there was a ton of transmog content that I could do. Oh my gosh. Going back to those raids and like finally being able to just like one shot Illidan was so satisfying. I don't know why. <laughs> Oh man, it's actually probably the most fun. Uh, it's the one thing that I look forward to after like the grind of getting out of the campaign, because like it's just taking longer because I'm an adult and I just can't sit down and play a video game every single day. But as soon as I'm done with this campaign, I'm going transmog hunting so hard. Like I'm going to try and get um, uh, what is it got Shadow Morn. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for. All of the things that are fucking awesome, and just and see how far I can get before my uh, attention dies. But um, yeah, going to try to go for uh, Ashes of Valar. No, no, no. I the thing is for mounts, I have some things that I like. I want, but they're not. They don't define my experience, if that makes any sense. Like the ship that you showed us earlier today, I was like, oh man, how do I make that? Do I have to be an engineer to get that? And then you were like, oh no, you just do all the delves. And I was like, say no fucking more. less. <laughs> I will get that done. Oh. Um, so that's not going to be an issue in terms of just like hunting for mounts. There are some things that are interesting that I've seen. Uh, I don't know how to get the yak with the uh, repair spot and the transmog um, person, but I just discovered a pet that has a transmogrifier, so I'm like, eh, do I need it now? I mean, maybe. Anyway, um, but yeah, I... <sighs> The only thing that I'm salty about with this entire experience, and I know I'm like derailing, I'm supposed to be going to my top. I'm supposed to be ranking all the expansions, right? The top three. I can still okay. hear you. I'm going to put you on speaker. Okay. I still hear cool. you. Okay. Um, but yeah, the one thing that I, I, what am I running into? What am I? What was it that I was saying? God dang it, Anthony, you interrupted. Anyway, I'll continue my stream of thought with the next expansion. So the next expansion for top for uh, top is, after Legion, is Wrath of the Lich King. Now, again, nostalgia. Also, probably the farthest one that I got in terms of rating um, before everything fell to shit. But, um... Yeah, like for some reason, the lore of that just kind of like resonated with me as I was going through it. Um, that being said, going back and, look, and like thinking back to it, I now see like the the cracks in the in the uh, armor, so to speak. Um, I wish there was more. I wish there was more of what's contained within this expansion now in terms of the interactivity of the of like you being present within the actual discussions that are changing the face of the story. And then there are certain parts within what Wrath of the Lich King that are just like complete garbage. Like there's the area south of um, Dragon Blight that's just like absolute slog to get through. It's like the Walrus Kin or whatever. And there's also this uh, like verdant area in the middle of all the ice. I don't even remember the freaking uh I don't remember the quest line that was in it. I just remember it being like, oh fucking kill me. <laughs> I just remember having that reaction be like, this is fucking dumb. I hate it. Um 
And yeah, that's the only game. That's the only expansion I played outside of um, uh, Cataclysm, because I didn't do Battle for, Battle for Azeroth, and I didn't do Mes- Mesa of Pandaria, and I didn't do um, Warlords of Draenor. Wait, no, did I do Warlords? Maybe I did Warlords. Well, no, that was before Warlords, BFA. Warlords was right before. No, Warlords was right before uh, Legion, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, you might well, have I done just, Warlords uh, to level crashed. up for Legion. I did. I, I don't know. I did not left. Huh? Wow had just crashed Google. Dude, Wow has been crashing everything related to a Google uh, browser. I don't know what's going oh, on with it, God. but every single time I open it up, it freezes up everything. I that gotta was, shut down the entire. That's crazy. Thing. That was crazy. I just I I wanted to see. Uh, I no, I wanted go to, to talk about the, the mounts that yeah, were, were man. coming. I'm uh, gonna be hunting. Icy veins might is a better is a better bet bet for you right now. Yeah. I don't know if they have a database that you can use, but it, yeah. either way. But um, those are my three. Um, they don't really compare to this expansion just because this expansion does something uh very nuanced and something completely new that is um not seen in any other games they make everything sparkly and and pretty and nice so there's the game that i love and then they took all the aspects of like new technology and then applied it to the game that i love so i was like oh of course i'm gonna like it so yeah that's those are my ratings and classic is number one No, classic. I didn't even raid in classic. I didn't really play classic. I mm-hmm. play. I bought World of Warcraft, knowing that Burning Crusade was coming to come out, and I leveled before it to get to get to Burning Crusade. Mm-hmm. So, my experience with the game doesn't start until after classic. Okay. So I'm actually. I think I'm younger World of Warcraft wise than y'all. But I don't know, Anthony. Did you did you play World of Warcraft during Classic? I don't remember. Yeah, but not with Eric so much. A little bit maybe oh. with Eric towards the end. Eric and we, I played. We didn't know we each played it, yes. and then when when we essentially when I found out he played it, it we was both after over. I had already done like the rating and stuff. I started a character on his server, and then we figured out Burning Crusade was coming out, and we were like. What are we doing? We're just going to start Blood Elf Paladins when it comes out. And literally <laughs> yep. the day of release, we started our Blood Elf Paladins, and I've been playing mine ever since. It's the only character also, that I've played. Also, because since. we were both on Alliance and everyone else was on Horde. Yeah. Definitely. Dude, fuck Alliance scum. Look, when Eric and I go and create a character, we're looking for something that is pleasing to the eye. Same here, but I'm also I'm not torn. out here to be a little. I'm not out to be a little ninny muggins. It's not about ninny muggins. I will not be shamed for this. We're not shaming. <laughs> We're just saying, like, some people are like, I want someone that looks like a badass that's going to destroy everybody. We're like, I want to see that booty on the female. <laughs> Because that's what I like to watch the rear end of. I don't want to watch the rear end of a bunch of dudes. <laughs> you hear that, Ash? You hear that, Ash? She actually loved. She that. actually like thought that was awesome that that you and I would play female characters. She was like, "That's cool." Dude, I dig female characters too, but something speaks to me about being a massive cow person. You know, with a, you, with a massive weapon, just going like, "I'm gonna crush you now." I think the only thing for me <laughs> is that I think there is a disproportionate amount of detail done on female characters in game than male characters and i think that's largely Uh-oh. largely just due to most of the people working in these games being it, it is like a male dominated industry still uh-huh. that's probably why hot anduin isn't all that great it was probably a dude that made his fucking face yeah. in it was definitely a dude <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a dude and it wasn't a gay dude it was the straight <laughs> dude was, who didn't care it was not a gay dude it was, it was the wrong dude, dude. <laughs> Dude, one of the funniest, very straight dude. One of the funniest interactions I had not too long ago was uh one of my Ash and I's uh friends who's gay. He was um he was like, "Wait, you always like play a girl in games?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Does Ash always play a girl?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, 
yeah, we're we're totally lesbians in every game we play. And he was just like, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> he did not appreciate it. You can't run. You can't run. It was so good, dude. Don't wor- don't you worry. I'm gonna take good care of you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So so Anthony, did you rank yours? Did you rank No, yours? it's my turn. Okay. Yeah, so it's your turn. unfortunately, uh when we were youngsters, uh I was enjoying so much of the Burning Crusade with Eric, and I enjoyed at least sixteen or seventeen days worth of play time. Most of that enjoyment was ten or so days in basically classic. And then six of those days was in the Burning Crusade. And then, for some reason, I got distracted by what I thought was love, but wasn't actually oh, love. Oh, man. It was I just a girl, <laughs> you know? It was just a girl. Yeah, you're, there's going to be a common theme about love. There's there's love that wasn't real, and then there's love that is real. Uh, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, Damn. And so I Say didn't get to chest, enjoy dog. the best part of the Burning Crusade with you guys. So it's in last place for me and fourth. Because Wait, I no, spent, you totally did. No, I didn't. I spent so much time getting there, so much time leveling up to get there, and then at the worst point in time, decided to have a girlfriend. And, Wait, you did. Wait, and then I didn't get to raid. Right. Y'all, I did raid with you like a couple few raiding. times, but yeah, I yeah. was like, y'all had done it a million times. Y'all knew your way yeah. around the block. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I didn't yeah, get any I of the loot because yeah. it, it is, I'm baby. I don't matter. He is baby. So it was a little <laughs> weird, you know? And I and I just sat there and I was just confused. You didn't actually Man. do a lot of raiding with us until Wrath of the Lich King. Probably. I didn't Dude. play Wrath you of the Lich King of the at Lich King all because then all. I was very Bro. much dating the same person. So- <laughs> So you really, Bro. like, League of Legends is what we played together more yes. than anything else. What? Yes. Yeah. And so I I wish I got to experience that. Nowadays, <sighs> I wish that we all had enough time that I could have experienced it through Classic WoW, but that's not a possibility. It's, it's, Dude, it's, it's like, we all tried man. with Seasons of Discovery. We had a great time, but... We couldn't that keep up with schedule, that. Well, even then, that Harrison, release schedule was man. just rough. It was weird. I, it was weird. It, it, like season of discovery was, is such a cool idea, and still today I have been watching it. And there's so much cool content that they're doing for it, and I would love to keep up with it. But the the release cycle of just they need to speed run it. Dry spells in between is just really they rough. they they need to railroad it. They need to railroad it to where it's kind of like modern WoW, but even faster. And you pick the zones that the players are going to go through ignore the other zones they hit max level you know through those zones and they complete the content and it's like a speed run of it and then next year they're going to do the next one where they do different zones for the leveling experience and they just ramp up all the amalgam core almost like a uh not a roguelike but almost like a hey novel experience part do or whatever yeah it's like it's like rereading parts of the book and getting to the end without having to go through every single zone you know what i mean that makes sense so that that could have worked well your tops are actually going to be very different Different. probably legion and this expansion no so unfortunately third place is actually legion now legion was really great but guess what you were still stuck riding a mount on the ground. True. There was, it's so stupid. There was a zone I distinctly remember not enjoying. There was a zone that was such a trog. It was like trudging through mud and quicksand mixed together in this horrible thing that you can't die in, but you slowly eventually make it to the other side. And the icing on the cake. Worse, now, man. Nikov, if you're there, if you're ever listening, this wasn't you. <laughs> I know this wasn't you. I'm not blaming you, but Nikov was there. Nikov was there. Nikov though. convinced me to do a raid, and I was said, I'm not high enough eye level for that. Are you sure? I don't think I should do this. And he says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. We spend like three Bruh. to four hours doing this raid. We're at the very like last boss, and we can't beat him. I have a DPS meter. I am the lowest eye level 
but I'm in like second, third, fourth place for DPS. It's not me. I know it's not me. <laughs> Mikov comes back and he goes, I'm sorry, man, but we're kicking you because you're the lowest eye level. I'm like, it's not me! It's not me! <laughs> After that moment, I stopped playing Legion because I was so like so I turnt. you know what's you know what's crazy is I remember you talking to me about that like right as it was happening because I I can't remember what happened. I think I got on after the raid started and I I was like, I, I can't do the raid. Yeah. And then at one point for the last boss, you like asked me if I was available and I was yeah. like, I think I'm going, I, I'm like going to bed. I have to work like in the morning. Yeah. So it it was one of those things that you, you had such an investment. You told the people ahead of time, no, I shouldn't do this. It, you're If anyone has the freaking out on, you can see it's not me. And then you kick me out. And it, it just like, it killed me. And so I stopped playing Legion right there. Uh, so Legion that is in sucks. third place. Legion was pretty good. I remember it being good. It was pretty good. Now comes the top two contenders, which are hard for oh. me to rate, which is the War Within and BFA. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and Battle say... for Azeroth? Really? Because of love. <laughs> oh. So the you thing... You did say it was a communal... It was The a thing about B Battle for Azeroth, which is why it's, it's kind of in first place right now, but also in second, because I don't think it's going to be the reigning champ, is that Battle for Azeroth had a lot of cute little things. Like, I'm never going to forget, the turtles made it to the water. Like, that <laughs> was so good. But the biggest thing was, this was the first time my wife, Ash, really, really got into WoW, and we played so much of it together. Okay? the And we, we played almost everything like we both unlocked high mountain Torin. we both unlocked the little uh foxy guy people and we played some of them to like level 15 as rogues and it was cute and it was just such a great time to spend with my wife in the game now there are things that weren't great like not having a flying mount right away and having to run around but they did do a better job and the zones were better and there was just things felt a lot better the story kind of lame uh the Happens. the dinosaur thing cool but eventually got really real like the music just was way too the same thing over and over again yeah. uh but it was cool um unfortunately since this was like my wife's first time around she didn't really get into doing dungeons or raids those were very intimidating and that's yeah. why the war within is probably going to be number one very soon because not only does it have sky riding, which makes just getting around fun and all these other things we've already talked about, but now you have follower dungeons and my wife already loves that and has enjoyed it. And you have delves and yeah. And, and you can, you can do both of those together. And yeah, but, and I quote, my wife has already said, I like, I think I want to get good at wow. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's so great. She, she want, does she want to be a healer? I don't know. I, what does she want to? What did she want to do? She want to do? You know. Like, so what do you wanna, she's what been having a lot of do? fun leveling on her paladin tank solo. She yeah. really likes her shadow priest. Shadow priest. Shadow, so DPS. I mean, okay. I, I and then she did a lot of mage stuff in the past. Tattoo, so. Yeah. Yeah. And she did a lot of mage stuff in the past, so I don't know if she'll go back to her mage. I or also not. think Shadow Priest is in probably the best state it's ever been. Ever. Honestly. Been. So like it's a lot of fun. Really yeah. cool. So definitely a reasonable pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, so I, I think the war within is gonna be end up being my top expansion, most likely. Cause like it's a thing I say all the time, which is if your game isn't fun to play with everything story-wise gone it's not good in this game is fun to play without the story it's they've oh. got a good rotation going yeah and like i said most of my gripes with the war within aren't with the main gameplay mechanics of mechanics life. are not like, the issue like they here. are honestly at some of the best they've ever been if 
like barring a few things in my opinion they're like just solid all around uh, i think yeah. if you were to rate the gameplay mechanics of each class or like together this is the best wow has ever been from a gameplay me mechanic perspective simply because if i looked at places where i thought paladin healing was better i guarantee you i know examples from those same times where other classes were absolutely abysmal and so right now if you were to average it all out more classes are better than they're they've ever been mm -hmm. so that's really cool i like i can't even downplay that at all oh and in uh last place i was gonna say fifth place but no like last place like low fifth place shadowlands because my wife and i went to play shadowlands like we played everything in bfa playing together and it was so bad especially when we got to a point and the game goes you can't do any more of this until next week that's th that's and terrible. we were just I, it was like what we're playing yeah. the game you're saying i can't play the game anymore that's crazy and it was the biggest time gating thing ever and then yeah. i think we tried to play a little bit of um the dragon one not right when it came out though and we were probably having some fun but honestly it was probably just like bad timing i could see that i honestly think that the 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 dragon isles was and this will kind of go into my rating i think it like the story was abysmal <laughs> if you just were to read out the story to somebody you'd be like what is this dribble um, what is this trash <laughs> yeah but from a gameplay mechanics perspective it was just two or three steps down from where we're at right now but you could see where they were heading that led to this expansion and so i had a lot of like i said i actually think that i had more fun doing the main story quests from dragon isles than i did doing the main story quest for the war within the gameplay mechanics were close to where they were there were still a lot of problems um but they were close to being like near where they needed to be which i think is where they're getting to in this expansion so like it was honestly really close i had a lot of fun with dragon isles and there was a fight uh which um for anybody who doesn't know the in the raids for dragon isles it was the uh, uh oh my gosh what was his name are they gonna it was where you go into the tree so Am Amidrasil, the Dream's Hope, uh, had a bunch of bosses. The last one was Firak the Blazing, whatever. I've heard about him. Right before him was Tindril Sage Swift, which is, in my opinion, on Mythic, one of the most dynamic and cool fights that I've done in a very, very long time. So I like might crash the in a second, raid guys. Fights, Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. The raid fights were really fun. So for me, um, again, I specifically am trying to keep nostalgia out of it because I like you, Nat. I, I, there was something that just everything hit right at the right moment for the Burning Crusade. It was just really special. But I do think that just from a, a gameplay mechanic, world building, the openness, the way that classic felt was a better game. But I think life just hit different in Burning Crusade. And so it's really close for me, but I, I think I would put it classic and then Burning Crusade. And when I went back and played classic again, I loved it when that came out. And then playing the um, WoW Hardcore in classic, also just love it. I, I think that experience, the open world feeling the way the classes are all different, they weren't trying to make every class good or make every class as good as other classes. Every class had something special that they brought to the table that was totally different than every other class. There was so much uniqueness that stopped in Burning Crusade, right? Like you Burning know, Crusade was a first step to change that. For me, like before, the cat Cataclysm and before is so different from after that I agree. like it's hard to compare yeah 
I agree. Like, I really love Classic and everything we've done with Classic and the Burning Crusade, but it is so different. It's so different. It is a different game entirely, and I, I concede to that point. I'm very much just for fun trying to, like, bucket everything together because yeah. it's technically the same game. Yeah. But, like, I 100% agree. Comparing them kind of unfair. all together is definitely unfair. I agree. But just for the fun of it. I'm it's kind of like, it anyway. it's just, like, such a different yeah. vibe. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. It's totally different games. Like, they are just different. But with that said, um, I think Classic is still still my top. I think Burning Crusade is right below that. Shit, I opened up Wowhead again. I didn't even mean to. I did the same thing as I was looking oh up uh, uh, Zulfrak. Or, no, oh, not uh, I, Alfrak. I know. I looked up the raids to try and get that boss name, and yeah. now, it's, now it's going now it's crazy. Gone. I, I don't know. I speculate that Riverside is taking up like more resources now. No, it's no, not Riverside. No, it's it's whenever I have nothing Wowhead. open. I, yeah. I, I actually have the thing open, and Wowhead is taking like 80% of my CPU. Like the Wowhead tab is taking up like 80%. I mean, maybe it's Windows CPU. 11, but yes. like, I swear a few weeks ago, I could share screen and things were fine and videos were smooth. And then at least ever since having Windows 11, I can't do that anymore. I just can't do it anymore. Wait, I didn't think classic counted. I thought that was a joke because it's not an expansion. You asked about expansions. <laughs> okay. But you like classic more. Classic more than Burning Crusade as a game. Yeah. I think a lot of things in life lined up that made me enjoy Burning Crusade more, but I think as a game, classic is better. Then, Fair. I think there's kind of a dip. My next favorite expansion is kind of well below that. I am very different. I know a lot of people enjoyed Wrath of the Lich King, but I think it introduced some of the mechanics that I dislike the least about WoW, and it leaned into them so hard in the beginning because they were novel and new that they overplayed it so much. And... So I, I didn't really enjoy Wrath of the Lich King. It, there were things about it that were great, but it was it sat pretty low for me. Same thing, Cataclysm, Miss of Pandaria, those were all like, kind of low on the list for me. There were things that were special about them and cool, but they just didn't fall it. I think my next one after that is really going to come down to Legion or The War Within. I think those okay. are, those are it's it's very close. I'm excited to see where War Within goes. Oh, I think it's right around Legion for me so far. Um, there was just something so special about the artifact weapon and the excitement and the questing. Yes, that was cool. That. True. Was so I fun. I'm actually kind of annoyed. True. I still keep my artifact weapons and stuff because they're so important, and I kind of sad that you. They're just gone. You, they didn't yep. persist. Couldn't, and I didn't get the, and we didn't get the transmogs for them either, right? Wait, what? No. You I have don't. to. I don't. You, I don't have the transmog for my warriors. Uh, weapons. But you, you know what? You made me realize, Eric, when you're saying that is another rating, completely different for me would be story wise. Which expansions are the best? Did you catch that, Eric? Wowhead took like it out. Story was. So Wowhead took me out. Yeah, we see you uh, twice now, which is not good for my stream, but whatever. Yep. Oh, let me. Uh, I do not see myself. You are twice. here multiple times. Let me, let me look at my live recording. It's kind of oh. funny. Oh, no. I can fix it on my end for now. So hopefully. Oh, no, you fixed it. Okay. So cool. when you were talking a moment ago, you made me realize that another rating system would just be like story based and for me it, that changes everything for me story based it's like legion is top tier and now the war within has a chance to be first place if it if it like delivers cuz the legion storyline is what brought me back to wow yeah. if it wasn't for that i i was 
for a very long time i was one of those jerks that would just be like you know i i don't remember what i would say but there were things i would say that were like what everyone would say like oh just wow whatever like those old graphics and stuff like that like stupid stuff where you don't actually even know what's going on you like act like it's just dumb well legion brought me back the story of legion was great and hopefully the war within actually starts yeah, going I, in the right direction with i think that it has a lot of potential i i love some of the story stuff that they've done so far uh, again legion was definitely up there there were just so many things about legion that were so well done and just fun um i i agree there are systems now that are in place that are objectively like i think the class mechanics and playing them are better now than they were in legion yeah they were for sure they got very repetitive oh in legion yeah i i think they were in the right direction in legion but they just missed the mark a little and then they missed the mark even further with bfa in my opinion and then much further in shadowlands and then dragon isles they reined it back in and they started back on the right path and i think they're in a good spot right now where they they have the scaffolding to just keep building something nice in this new age of wow and they remove some bloat and kind of streamline and make things more fun and engaging and just keep improving in that regard and they're they're in a solid spot. so one weird thing for the war within is the what i don't know what they call it, like the hero talent tree it's like the level yeah. 60 to or the level 70 to 80 talent tree in the middle of your two things yeah. mm -hmm. i'm like oh cool but then it's like wait a second you're gonna end up picking all of these and there's like two options where you have something to differ yeah and i was I, like that felt kind of lame i i agree to some point i think the way that i contextualized it is more similar to like path of exile where and they definitely just stole this from path of exile by oh. the way. this is just the um the, the affinity classes or whatever they are from Path of Exile, where essentially what you're choosing is one of the two. And then as you level up, you're unlocking the full thing. There yeah. isn't a lot of... Your choice is between these two hero archetypes, not between individual talents in them. Yeah. And mm. so what I want to see in the future is a larger so the, differentiation yeah, between exactly. hero archetypes and make them it just, feel more special it, as a full it, unit. It feels like someone is talking to me like I'm five years old, even though I'm an adult. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, you're going to have so many choices. You get to choose whatever you want. You're going to take these 10 things. You're going to put them in here. And then if I'm five, really I put them not. in there. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, I created such a special thing. I'm so unique. It's like, you no, really no, no. Everybody did the exact same thing because that's the only mm. option. Yeah. What I'd rather and you might have chose one or two things different. Yeah. What I'd rather see is instead of like, like, like I understand that a lot of people want the dopamine rush of getting something new every level, but that's not how WoW works anymore. What no, I would rather no. see is get rid of that tree, make it a static new set of things that changes your class based on the hero you choose, which is just the tree. Like, but condense that into one thing. When I get max level, it goes. You've hit max level. What kind of hero are you? And then you get to choose one of four options or something, or in this case, one of two options. But my hope would be that in the future, what Dude. you're actually getting are additional hero archetypes that you could choose from that totally change some of the base mechanics of your class. Dude, what if they did it like Diablo 3 Paragon levels? You get I was thinking a the exact tiny same thing. little bit stronger every level that you get beyond 80. I was thinking the same I mean, thing. here's the thing. I would That'd honestly... Be cool. I, I talked to Anthony about this the other day. I think the biggest problem with World of Warcraft is vertical scaling instead of horizontal scaling. I oh, think 99% yeah. of all of the problems that MMOs have in general is based off of vertical scaling and games. So you think that it should be deeper in the sense that people should be able to achieve the same level of DPS, tanking, healing, whatever it might be, 
but varied enough that it's unique to the user. I So yes and no. One of the things okay. that me and Anthony were talking about or that why ever increase the, the the level cap why why not have something more like a guild wars 2 type of scenario instead of you going through and getting this new expansion and getting stronger you're unlocking new pieces that you need to complete certain dungeons similar to how classic was done where oh the difference in strength between somebody who's like going to Molten Core versus going to Naxxramas isn't really the power scaling in between the, the the weapons or the armor. It's like, oh no, you need these types of resistances. You yeah, need like... these, these potions. You need these consumables to be able to go and do Naxxramas. How do you get those? You have to do the previous tier of raids, right? And you can add more depth to mechanics and not only will that keep older content more interesting because they might become relevant or still be relevant for certain pieces of content that you release in the future. It adds more depth to the tooling kit that you need as you go through the game. Now, the one downside to that is that as you increase the number of expansions, you also increase the amount of time somebody may have to spend to get something no. that they feel is top tier. But I feel like if you design, because everything's horizontal scaling instead of vertical scaling, the best armor from each expansion is still close, close enough. to the best armor. So yeah. if I skipped three expansions, sure, I might have to grind a little bit for new enchantments to do resistances on my current armor. I might have to do some amount of stuff, but I'm already ready to go. Yeah. Once I unlock things through the main story quest and things like that. Yeah. And like the cool thing about this would be like, so right now, if you want to do anything, the war within, perhaps you need some special, like uh pressure resistance because we're going deeper into the core. So the pressure is stronger. Right. But mm -hmm. you want to go and do a Rathi basin, some other PVP thing, some other raid or whatever that is max level. Cause everything's max level. Well, you go put okay. on your other set of armor that you love to use. You get to go and use your Legion legendaries and they are actually worth using because you're you're not in the War Within right now. You're in a Wrathy Basin. So you can take a break from the new expansion, go do some old stuff that is still relevant because you're still wanting to get this thing from it or it's just fun. And you don't have to suddenly be like, well, there's a new expansion out, so I can't go do those fun things I used to do because now I'll be weak. I can't be weak. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't. I can't. But it yeah. also, I feel, and now here's the thing. That is so much harder on the designers to make sure that everything For is sure. good. For sure. Like, I can For see sure. that is a more difficult path. I feel like Blizzard and Activision, or, uh, yeah, either way, Blizzard has the capabilities as a company to pull this off. They have the funding, they have the capability. They have the power, they have the technology. They are choosing an easier route with vertical scaling because they don't ever have to worry about previous expansions ever again. They can just invalidate all of it and the new expansions are essentially a new game that starts from 10 levels. Yeah. Well, but so when we were talking, when Eric and I were talking about this the other day, the big counter argument to it is that what we're saying might be nice, but people generally might actually hate that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. They probably for do. They probably, they probably, the general populace probably prefers what happens right now. It's more I straightforward. It's, what they do it's right more now. understandable. It feels you feel more progression. Yep, guys, it's skippable. Yeah. What do you mean? It's skippable. Like you can go through all of this content. You don't have to read anything. You don't have to do anything. You just go. Yeah. It's skippable. Yeah. You literally just get dopamine. Yeah. Again, I'm not I'm not saying that's the uh, like perfect solution, but that is how I wish it had done. Especially when I'm like 
going through, and, and this is also probably heavily skewed by me be doing a lot of RuneScape recently. And the way that RuneScape works is that all the content is viable. And all the content from years ago, the old raids, viable. You can go and do them today and they'll help your viable. account. The whole progression system is separated from these attribute levels, right? If you get 99 strength, you sure, you level up your strength to 99, but from a gear progression scaling type of thing, there's still this system of progression. And some of their new raids are in between these different progressions from middle to late game. And so you can go and do any new content, any old content, and all of it is worthwhile to do in mm. perpetuity. And they designed RuneScape as an attribute thing to be progressive up to 99, and they can add new ones. Those new things unlock stuff constantly. But the game itself and the, the, the raids, the dungeons, the things that you do, they're horizontal scaling. And is it's a nice little mix. And so coming from that back to, back to WoW, I'm like, and especially when I see like the time walking and how much people like the time walking and now the 20th anniversary of WoW coming up where they're going to go back and do older raids and stuff like that and unlock mm -hmm. those. It's one of, this stuff is so exciting and so cool and people are raving about how much they can't wait to go and do these old raids. And it just leads me to think, why did we create a situation we where we ever stop doing the old race why did we wait uh, uh, like the question is always going to be why did we wait yeah and so well, it's, like it, a, it's one of just cool idea i wish wow had done that. the weird thing is it reminds me that i was listening to something the other day there's this guy trying to get published he wrote a novel that's high fantasy like lord of the rings right and no one will publish him because all they want right now is um modern fantasy which is like yeah. twilight where it's magic but in the real world hidden you know if you aren't how do i explain this if you aren't trying to take the concept of the original fantasy and making it more relatable to people's current situation enough where they can believe that they could escape into it. It you're, but, you're chasing the wrong tree. But dude, like the funny thing is he brings up a great the point. Tree. There's no such thing as a modern fantasy that is as popular as Lord of the Rings or game of Thrones or you're not wrong. Insert here. Those yeah, aren't, yeah. those might sell well, but they don't sell incredibly. They're not the they're no. not the next big thing. You know, like Dune isn't modern fantasy. Yeah. Right? True. It's like, one true. of people want like the things that truly stand out as special are things that do something novel and unique. Yeah. Not things that just try to like sit in a bubble of like some concept. You know, that's that's why you have things like the Cosmere and Brandon Sanderson printing out billions of dollars. That's like that's Man, why you have Lord of the Rings machine. being a household name. Right. These things created something that are totally novel. Dune, like nothing else has done something like as like crazily politically in depth as something like Dune created such an interesting universe it's like I, if y'all want to make a bet we can make a bet i don't know what the bet would be i don't know what the wager would be okay but i bet you okay. the next thing that is like dune level lord of the rings level star wars level game of thrones level is gonna come out of a video game from a team of one to five people a team of one to five that's awfully specific anthony i'm what saying what i'm saying is very small of? i'm saying yeah. like the next big story the next big thing maybe it's going to become books someday is going to come from there because 
I can explain. Okay. Creating a game has never been easier. And having that game available has never been easier Easy. or better. And I think that people might stumble upon something and play the shit out of it and dive into it like crazy more so than they used to with a book. I, so the only thing I'm skeptical about in that regard is that I feel like we've already had those types of games. Ex like, no, I'm saying we don't, we don't have a, games. we don't have a game that is more popular than Lord of the Rings. Agreed. Agreed. I'm saying, I'm, correct, I'm correct. saying the next thing that's going to be more popular than Lord of the Rings, which might happen in 50 years. I don't know. It's not going to be a book. It's not going to be a movie. It's not going to be ASMR. It's going to be a fucking game. Yeah, I just don't know how the game's going to get to that wide an audience, considering it's gonna, it's gonna. that we have some games that I would consider already at that level, if not higher. So They what, just aren't getting out to the audience. What I'm getting at is it's going to start as a game. I'm not saying that it's not going to be a book or a movie that takes it above Lord of the Rings. I see. I'm going to say the first introduction of it to society will be in game form. Like Eric, if you made a game, it had one of your stories in it, your game got successful, gave you financial freedom, you finally had the time to go and write the book or the screenplay or whatever, you released that, that went to the top, and people are like, wait, there's a game for this? Actually, wait, it's already no, out? It's I, not a bunch of people trying to put money into I'm it? Lying. This already happened. Wait, what? <laughs> it, it did. It did already happen. I, 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 Five Nights at oh, Freddy's. Uh, no. Five Nights, Five Nights at yeah. Freddy's is one of the top selling it's games huge. of all time. It and made it's, bank. It's coming out with he a movie. has 40 books serious? now or something like that. Mm -hmm. He has yeah. two movies now coming out. It is one of the household names because That's everybody hilarious. knows Five Nights at Freddy's. Does everybody know the game that came before it? Uh oh yeah, I don't know. No. I don't I, It's, it's called Fart know. Hotel. Yeah. A month before Fart he released Hotel? Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's, he released Fart Hotel. Yeah. This is why everybody should go and make games and just release the shit out of things. I remember this. Because yeah. the, he released yes, like so many games. The only right? reason he made Five Nights at Freddy's is because someone made a comment on one of his games and said, your characters look like weird, creepy animatronics. And he, and was, he was like, like oh, I'll do that incredible. next. <laughs> <laughs> incredible but yeah no 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 to that point i think you won the bet because i i would argue that five nights at freddy's is on that level of household recognition because i can go to like my mom and talk about five nights at freddy's and she'll know what i'm talking about that's wild i had no idea like it is huge there was a there was a movie in 2023 <laughs> It's actually really good. I I loved it. It has Matthew Lillard in it. Matthew Lillard. I love Come Matthew. Come on the podcast, please. Oh, no. um, Matthew, please. It's actually really a, a faithful movie. I felt like it was like it had no right to be as good as it is. Matt Pat, of course, makes a um <gasps> makes a cameo. It has in Josh it. Hutcherson. Yeah. It's it's honestly. Who was he? It is better than it has. Any right is... being for a video game movie. Um, it is fun. Oh, <gasps> is this Peter? It's Peter. Oh, Peter. The Hunger Games. Peter. Oh, oh yeah, God, yeah, yeah. Peter. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? I know this guy. It's the Hunger Games. Peter. Pain. But, um... All I know is pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. My I, Peter. I would argue Peter? that that's, that's it. That, that's like the mm. first one. That's the first one, but I, I, but it's so it's an example of what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not more popular than Lord of the Rings yet. Maybe I think yet. that depends but, on how you do popularity, yeah. though, because I, I would be curious to know if the Five Nights at Freddy's games, um, yeah, I and like, because because Lord of the Lord of the Rings does have some games, but not a ton, uh. The problem is that something might never pass Lord of the Rings. I mean, yeah. So, so it looks like. Oh no, this is or just like, the, not for a uh, hundred or two hundred years. Office. I want like all of it. Well, so like the the thing is that like Lord of the Rings has entered 
every conversation like Agreed. every relationship like oh do you like lord of the rings is like a thing where like if someone is like oh they like nerdy things it's like oh do you like lord of the rings like they associate nerdy with lord of the rings with lord of the rings yeah it's synonymous with the Which, um nomenclature yeah so it's so culturally embedded that it is going to take an insane thing well, to to pass it so here's the thing though five nights at freddy's has created the streamer generation like oh. remember that this game is what made markiplier pewdiepie the streamer revolution that the age that we were living at is largely because five nights at freddy's slender slender man and a few other games of that genre made gaming famous in the early 2010s or the or the mm -hmm. you know like they created youtube as it is so like put it on the map i am it i think that it does have a lot of cultural representation it's just not as embedded into our generation i would argue that if you go to a younger audience like one generation below ours mm. five nights at freddy's is probably it is the definite more experience. cultural culturally uh, appreciated than lord of the rings is so like the lord of the rings is multi-generational because they all know what lord of the rings is agree even though they were born after it came out and here's here's <laughs> something that's going to be really difficult to do as well because lord of the rings was a book written in the early 1900s my mom read the whole series yeah. hundreds of times before i was even born well yeah, the sad thing was what the public or not the publisher the author didn't actually get popular till they were 70 years old yeah until they were pretty much on their door yeah. that like yeah. on their death's uh door but yeah. like this this kind of built up slowly you know I mean? and you had this long trend and then the movies pushed it over the edge made it even more famous so there's been this length of time five nights at freddy's just to kind of like put it into perspective maybe it, it, you're right and it's not as big as lord of the rings but it is coming so close mm -hmm. and it's only 14 years old not a century old yeah right so in one tenth the time almost it is becoming as are very close to well, the that's the interesting thing because i think the next thing has to be something like five night at freddy's or something space sci-fi because you can't unseat the lord of the rings until a completely different genre is what's mainstream and i will say so if it just if these are all very basic estimations from like very limited google searching so none of this is like don't quote me on any of this uh internet um but they argue that the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has probably made somewhere between one and $1.5 billion in totality, right? And the Lord of the Rings uh, franchise... Got to adjust it for inflation. Uh, uh, agreed, agreed. But they are arguing that it's probably close to six billion dollars for the lord of the rings franchise mm -hmm. so we're still looking at like six times larger but even to start approaching that is in 14 years is still a huge deal fellas i gotta bounce i'll see you guys in a bit oh continue out of here Play up. Please. Please. Bye. we didn't get his oh, ranking no. of uh Oh, now your whole stream is going to be messed up. No, I got a two-person button. Oh, no. Thought ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ooh, that was close. I thought that I didn't. The, I thought I wasn't able to do it. One great thing about uh, River, well, one one of the few great things about Riverside is that it auto lay, lays it out for us. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ash is back. Nice. What'd she say? So, yeah, I I do think that you are right in that regard. And we we yeah. got our ratings. Um, so I think this is about Five Nights at Freddy's. Ash says that she feels like it's culturally significant in the same way stuff like Twilight is. Uh, but it and it will mean a lot to a specific generation, but it won't hold up over time. 
I think that's that's a fair assessment, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. I I think the only thing that I'm getting at is that I think it's a good argument for what you're saying. In yeah, that, it's like a proof of concept that it's yeah. possibly the next big thing will start as a video game. Yeah, I, I just think, think it's true. a it's a great way to insert yourself into society without gatekeepers. But I will say, I think the next, um, I think the next Lord of the Rings thing for our generation and generations going forward is going to be Brandon Sanderson. Um, oh yeah. Only yeah, because be cool. the amount of money that he get is getting to play around with, to be able to do cool things and the amount of good material he has and the way that material will translate to shows and movies for mm. the next 30, 40 years. Once he kind of like sells off those rights and other people they have enough content from his books already. No. He's not even close to being done. That and he his Cosmere is so ingrained that it's very much a Star Wars type of scenario. That at some point he's gonna have other people writing books for his conglomerate, you know, universe. And that type of thing will be very Star Wars esque. We could be seeing new Cosmere content well, so for decades. The weird thing is that I don't think it will work unless when the movies come out, they go back to practical props, at least in some hybrid fashion. Because one of the th- reasons that to this day, uh, Lord of the Rings, people will still go and watch it is because there is an insane understanding of things that are actually real even if it's like miniature or whatever we know i mean freaking cgi is amazing and it looks great but we know when we're looking at cgi Agreed. and and uh, when something is really there it it just translates properly and agreed. people love that and it, I, there's so many times i've seen like it might have been uh what was it upside down in the upside down I can't remember what it's called, but there's Stranger been, Things. Stranger Things. There's been shows and movies where they have incredible props, horrifying props. And then somebody said, replace that with CGI. And it looks worse. <laughs> like, why? Here, the unfortunate truth I think about this is that we're probably not going to see a renaissance of practical props because of how expensive time is at that level anymore and practical props aren't like harder or even cheaper from a spinditure perspective but they're cheaper from a time perspective because i can pay a small group of cgi animators versus a thousand stage Mm -hmm. workers setting up the stage makeup artists like prop designers actors extras but you know what you miss out on a lot so the the cgi people do a great job but they're so they're under so much pressure that they don't have time right 100 percent. so if you ever go and listen to adam savage talking about all the random stuff that he's worked on for decades there is so much story that these prop designers put into their stuff where they're like, it's not retconning. It's a, what, when a fan makes their own story, like it's not, it's not canonical. Is that the right word? It's not Canon. Yeah. uh, Right. Canonical. But they're designing the ship and they're putting all these, little pieces into it or they're designing this uh this set right you see the same thing potentially in video games where you're like in an environment and the main person the main writer director didn't oversee the set design but the set designer loves the story and they put in little hints and pieces of something and if you look at it and you pay attention to it you're like you might actually pick up on what they were thinking or something similar and 
it just adds a layer of depth to something that is impossible to have with one or two or three people directing the ship. When you have a thousand different people telling the same story, basically, you create like a real world and it feels like a real world. And I think that's what is missing when you don't do practical set and and whatever you call it monster and whatever like design stuff i mean i i agree to a large extent i think this is a lot of the reason that we see better cinematic storytelling at a tv scale nowadays mm -hmm. than we do in um in like like the movies. marvel movies yeah yeah like because... it's ins it's insane when the marvel movies are like they don't even have the suits on and they just digitally put them on. Right. And yeah. then maybe they miss something, but maybe if they were real, a set, a person that was putting the suit on this person would be like, wait, no, they had this fight here. They got hit right there. So it should be damaged right here on them. It's not going to be the same on everybody else. They're going to have a gash. Yeah. That doesn't happen in the CGI thing. Cause that person is completely just like, this is your directive. Do exactly this. You don't even see the rest of the show. You just see this one scene completely yeah. dis associated. Uh, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do in a, a practical setting that is just can't be translated well to CGI. And it is unfortunate that I just don't, like, we, I don't think we're going to see that on a movie scale again for until video game book movie but because see, it can't be produced by the producers that produce movies right now because they're set in their ways well but the problem is that a lot of those video game things like five nights at freddy's and things like that they're selling the rights to their story for some director or producer to be able to do it so Gross. like that that's how it's working i honestly think that we're not going to see it from that perspective i i think the better transitionary period is for it to take the game of thrones approach where you're doing a show like i think a show is the right answer a lot of show producers and things like that they have a ton of people but they don't have the upfront budget for doing like these giant cgi projects so they're like how do we get stuff done with the team that we have and like they connect the dots this is like why a lot of the early Game of Thrones feels so good. One, they don't have a lot of that fantasy uh, like stuff. They're only using CGI for some things, right? Most notably the dire wolves and the wall and stuff like that. And then background CGI to make landscapes look a little bit better. So a lot of the scenes feel visceral. They feel real. They feel nice like because they're using a lot of practical sets. Once you get into the later seasons when they had more money, they started offloading more and more stuff to CGI. Things got a little bit weirder. Like you can start to notice that trend. And then you also add in the story problems and stuff like that once they deviate from the books and you have all kinds of problems. But I think that's the way forward. Those first six seasons of Game of Thrones really epitomize how I think a a game should go into that or any form of media right now because they're kind of forced into doing practical things. The only problem with that is how unrealistic the game story is, right? How do you conceptualize something like a Mistborn, uh, you know the the metallurgy into on film when there's a lot of special effects that need to happen there which parts are going to be practical versus not practical wires they're going to have to do a lot of stuff it's going to be a little bit weird but i hope they take a practical approach to it even though that will definitely be harder for that type of story i guarantee you if they take a practical approach to it with just light CGI for special effects that are in addition to the scene, 
it'll be amazing. Yeah. Um, I think the best one, by the way, for this, my one of my favorite Marvel movies um, for practical effects would probably be Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. A lot of the combat scenes and stuff like that feel visceral. He has that Jackie Chan style of practical fighting that is just so nice on screen. Mm-hmm. And the special effects and CGI they do use is mostly an amplification of what they're doing practically, which works really well. That's how I like to see CGI. That's the CGI that I'm like okay with. I, I want to see stuff like that rather than you know, some of the other ones that exist where they're replacing entire outfits and like adding in to- like things that don't exist and like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, you may re- remember that ultimately Lord of the Rings was actually more like the first epic series like a show like game of thrones yeah because extended edition which is like honestly the definitive edition no almost 12 yeah almost 12 hours which is like 12 episodes an hour a piece or 50 minutes a piece and that's very long i think that might be longer than game of thrones seasons were um yeah 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 yeah. and so than some of the game of thrones seasons that's kind of like ultimately why when i watch a movie nowadays i'm looking for a visual experience a pleasurable visible like i just want to be visually entertained because they can't meet that level in one and a half hours no two hours no you need a minimum of three to four hours to tell a story yeah i agree a good story It, it, it takes a long time yeah. And most people don't want to do that. So movies are visual experiences. Now I could I could see that. But yeah. But uh you know, now that Nat's not here, I can't run to the bathroom. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I honestly I, I think that might be uh a good time to yeah. to call it then. I think we talked about a lot. I'm sure we'll talk about more wow next time. Oh yeah. Uh, Maybe we'll actually have some dungeon dungeon experiences yeah, collectively. Let's do it. I'm down. Yeah. Oh, and we're gonna have the uh the raid and mythics open up soon. Cool. So I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up this weekend. Nice. Finish the well, campaign. With, uh, that said. Audience, y'all y'all have a good week. Bye. Subscribe, like below, and we'll see you in the next one. See you. Peace.